Ah, we got one minute. I'm drinking uh, freaking sparkling water, cause, cause I don't, I have, I don't want to have a pop addiction. <laughs> and it's blueberry pomegranate. Here you go. Now you know too much I'm about back. me. Hello. What's pop? What's that? What's what? What's what? Pop. What's that? Pop. You said what's pop? She said mm -hmm. what's soda. 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 Oh. That's no, funny. Wait, only it, northern, only only northern people in America, maybe even Canada. I don't know what they call it. Josh, what do, what do people call pop in Canada? And then if you go if you go south and you say, "Hey, I want a pop," they'll be like, "What are you talking about?" And they'll just look at you and they'll escort you out of the building. <laughs> They're like, listen, we don't have that here. Welcome to the New Grounds podcast. Today's episode hosted by Zinzinix. everyone welcome to the new grounds podcast today i have a very special guest with us her name is rebecca doodles hello. Yeah. introduce yourself rebecca doodles hello i'm rebecca doodles um i'm an animator uh voice actor artist you know all, um, all of that you know from, all of that, all the cool yeah. stuff that you wish you were, that you wish you could do too. It just takes years of shit posting and animations and not giving up. That's all it takes, I think. And, and lots also of fan art. And laying on the floor. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Rebecca's yeah. like, here's a here's a picture of me, and she she posted a picture of herself just like laying on the floor face down, and it's like yeah. I, that's relatable. That's really relatable. I have some information about Rebecca Doodle. She was born June 24th, 1993. She's 24 years old. She lives in Germany, but also inside darkness. She's educated. She's, I don't know if you're still a university student. Are you? I'm still a university student, yeah, but I think you got the date wrong. Did I? Did I? Did yeah. I? When were you born? 1997. 1997? I thought you turned 24 this year. Am I, am I wrong? Hold on. Oh, no, no, you're right. I'm an idiot. That's your own birthday. Yeah. I'm stupid. Listen, yeah. we're starting this podcast off right, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let's redo that. Uh, uh, okay. <clears throat> uh, June 24th, 1997. Educated. She's still in university. Have you been in university for like two years or how much more school do you have to do? Uh, I was supposed to graduate like this year. Or oh, like last year, depending on it, but like you know, COVID hit, so it's like I've still got to do uh, internship, so that's gonna take a bit to get in these times. <laughs> oh man, what did you what did you go to university for? Uh, communication design. Communication design. What is communication design? It's like graphic design or like art, but like that had a baby, and they also teach you how to manage money to some degree. I see. And there's no animation courses, so you've just been like a self-taught animator. Well, they have, but the really good animation teacher or like professor they had before, he died before I joined university, so like, that's great. Awesome. Just before you were gonna learn animation. Yeah. He died. We should resurrect him. Any necromancers in chat? Can we, can we resurrect the old professor? <sighs> <laughs> just just for Rebecca Doodles. I feel like they would get along very well, you know? Also, Probably. Rebecca's blood type is pinkish. Nosebleeds is yes. <laughs> and she's also un known as the unnerving, blue-skinned, hand-back, crawly person. I wrote that myself in crayon. So That's, that's pretty nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's talk about your early days, Rebecca Doodles. Back when you were just a wee lad. Back when you were just a small humanoid on the internet. Your early oh, days. Joined, you joined Newgrounds December 7th, 2011. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't have any art submissions until 2019 unless the old ones were deleted. You actually got scouted by Ninja Muffin 99 so that just says like how much you started interacting with the community like in the past few years. But mm -hmm. there's still Homestuck Troll Power, which was submitted in 2013, which is the animation. You're also 
currently a nice like a collaborator i've seen you in a lot of reanimated you've supported clock day at one point there's also four chance spaghetti in 2013 which is a game which i played you can speed run it uh four chan <laughs> spaghetti speed runs I-, I guarantee i'm at the top of the leaderboard and then also just just to add on top of this this cool little portfolio i built of you you reanimated tank dick which was tom's original animation back in 2006 you commented you're like hey can i reanimate this and the town was like sure and then in 2020 you reanimated tank dick and even posted it the censored version on youtube and tom was credited as a voice actor yes so is there anything you would like to say about early new grounds early new grounds i would say um i was sort of on new grounds using my brother's account before that right Um, yeah but I wasn't sure if I should join because I was way too young to be really anywhere near Newgrounds at the time. <laughs> what was but your impression of it? Was it like, oh, it's a porn site, right? No, like, no, no. So I would say I was always thinking, oh, it's the madness side, <laughs> the madness game side. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> because I used to play these games. And then sure, sure, you know, Zone 10 content was laid on also mixed in and like, oh my god, that's also there. Um, but really just my brother was like, hey, look at this cartoon slash uh, animation that I'm watching all day look at this little sis i'm like okay (laughs) so was that like an early inspiration just like how wacky like madness was maybe or um yeah part of it uh i also was in between these sort of spurts of new grounds i also was um a tumblr person right i would go there oh god i actually i didn't find your tumblr is that still up Yes, still, it's still up. Everything's still up from 2010-ish, right? Do you uh, do you upload to it still? Yeah, I, I re uh, currently I reblog um, fan art. And nice. I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm not. Cool. I don't really post that much anymore because I feel like Tumblr has kind of died with the porn ban they made, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm still questioning that. I wonder if they're gonna get picked up by like a company or something because I don't understand banning porn unless you're trying to appease to like investors. And I, I've said this on, like, Twitter. I don't... Uh, and same with OnlyFans, but I heard OnlyFans is, like, still allowing porn. They just, like, regulate it now or something. I don't know. It's I just weird. I don't use OnlyFans. So I have no idea what's going on there. It's just... It's weird to see companies, like, turn on their porn. And then, like, you see their community just, like, well, fuck this place then. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I get it. That feeling makes sense then. Early... Tumblr. So you went between Newgrounds and Tumblr, and then Newgrounds, events. Tumblr, DeviantArt, and Fortune, and YouTube. Actually, you have and uh, YouTube, yeah. you have your earliest animation on YouTube is like 2011, and it's like this. I I've been trying to step away from the derogatory term furry, but I like it's an animal character. What do we? I would just gotta call it like a I, little I don't, furry. I, I guess. don't think it's derogatory personally because I used to be part of the furry community, right? Okay, so it's not seen as like a bad bad word to no like sometimes okay. furries like to rag on themselves with that word a bit but like uh i mean there's also scalies and there's furfinity which has the word fur in it as furry you know so it's like i don't think it's a bad word <laughs> okay that makes sense then because the whole community is centered like on furfinity i and when i was 13 i had a furfinity account my older brother had one i was like hey this looks cool and then me and my best friend made one and they were like hey I'm 13. This is weird. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's having sex with everyone. What is going on here? Oh, have you, have you seen the spiral tag on there? Oh my god. Oh god, no. Not top 10 things to stay away from the spiral tag. <laughs> I've seen Unfortunately, I think just from browsing the art portal on Newgrounds, I've seen some spiral uh I'll call it fan art, I guess. And yeah. I'm not I'm not too uh I can't watch that and then not take medication afterwards, I feel like. <laughs> so so your your early YouTube the you could see kind of the influences from the, the furry community and etc. And then also yeah. your music tastes. Like your early music tastes. I noticed like a lot of your videos and they're not on Newgrounds, but they, they're on they're on your YouTube and you can see that like a lot of your videos included music and and like maybe memes at the time that had music like it just seemed like you were kind of enjoying that that space of creative freedom where you like music and you like animation trying to figure out how to blend them together 
Oh yeah, like at the time back then, my biggest like thought process was I really want to do an animated music video. Like I, I saw Gorillas, right? Big inspiration, big inspiration there, and I was yeah. like, man, that. It also helped me through like my teen years quite a bit. The Gorillas music. I know it's a bit edgy looking back now, but it just sort of was like this cynical but also helpful, like or hopeful music, right? Because of course I got bullied in school, you know. Um, of course. <laughs> wait, wait, wait! What do you mean, of course? Just for being, just for liking furries and and wanting to animate and like yeah, certain basically. music. Yeah, basically, I was How the only you... person that wanted to be an animator from early like teen years. Not even teen. I was like five years old, and I knew I wanted to be an animator. So, <laughs> yeah. five years old. Yeah. How do you make a a big brain decision like that at five? What what inspired you in that way? Have you, do your parents are they um, involved in art of some f- form or was it no. cartoons? It, it was basically cartoons. There was one cartoon I think on some kind of Disney Channel, like German version of Disney Channel, which was a Jim Henson slash I think Disney production, Dog City. It's called. Okay. Um, and it's. It's a very old cartoon, but it shows basically this hand puppet that is an animator, and you see like the easel and like the place where he draws the animations. And on the paper, on the animation paper, uh, the Disney production is the um, they animate the figures on the paper like they are talking to the dog puppet who's the animator, and it's I, it's really nicely done. I think someone just posted it in chat, and it, it does look really nicely done. You're talking yeah. about all the dogs right there, and there's the one guy standing there, like, uh, animating? Yeah. That's that's crazy. Now, do you remember that vividly from childhood? Because, like, I can remember when I was five years old, but, like, the, my biggest memory was, like, tele- Teletubbies and then, like, learning how to tie my shoe. Um, like... I don't know. From... I can't really tell. Like, yes, it's very vivid in my memory, and I know a lot of things from my younger years. Um... I also sort of escaped, even as like six years old when I just got into school, I remember just being very infatuated with all of this stuff and I can clearly remember loving uh, Disney shows like Gummy Bears in their old, you know, uh, old style without any digital means, right? Where they had like this really fluent animation, especially in the intro. Um, I don't know, I just saw it and was like, I want to do that. That's wild. And then eventually your parents knew that's what you wanted to do, I guess? Cause yeah. Because soon they catch on, right? They start buying you, like, arts and crafts, and mm-hmm. they're like, oh, my daughter's going to work for Disney or something. <laughs> or something. <laughs> I got my first drawing tablet when I was, like, 11 years old. So, yeah. I would say someone who got bullied, like, as yourself, you still were, like, really personable. It always seemed like... If you if I look at everything on your early YouTube page, it just seems like you're always reaching out to your community or at least like trying to talk to them because you did your Die Anywhere Else cover. That was you just singing like the music, which is a cover of a song for uh, Night in the Woods. And it, it uh, that's just well, cool. I didn't sing that. I didn't sing that. I animated oh, you did that. Oh, oh, you yeah. animated it. Uh, there's, okay. there's a link or credit. I'm pretty sure Ellen Marie, I think, was the person who sung that. And okay, I thought okay. that was really cool. And I felt, you know connected to that as well so that's why i animated it now do you play guitar because i i think i saw a I, video I play, of you. A bit of, I play a bit of ukulele uh, i tried to play guitar but i'm too small of a person to really play the big guitar so Aww. um yeah i'm i'm four nine so my hands are tiny <laughs> four nine <laughs> rebecca doodles tidy compact you can fit her in a suitcase go get her now go she's in germany <laughs> grab her <Yeah>. grab her <laughs> she's too <Please> precious <laughs> that's awesome um, ukulele. I, when did you pick up ukulele uh, just recently really um because i wanted to do like digital music with lmms i think it's called and then i was like man i don't know shit about this uh this is really hard um, so I was like, maybe I, if I learn first an instrument, I can better, you know, get things going digitally as well, because then I have, like, trained ears and shit. Yeah. So you wanted yeah. to... What is LMS, by the way? LMS. I, I think I said it wrong a bit. Uh, it's Linux Music Maker, I think. 
LMMS Linux. Linux? Are you confirming that you use Linux? My father uses Linux, but I don't. I use Windows. Okay. <laughs> I don't know much about Linux, but I do know yeah. I don't. I've never touched the thing. That's fine. Also, I don't know if you consider this. Eh, I wouldn't call it like, like cringy or nothing. But you, you, you branched out into story time animations too, which I think was another way of you, kind of connecting with your audience or at least, like trying to, um, trying to find a base with like whatever your community was at the time. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the thing is, I was more in Discord chats with uh, people that did story times, like a uh, big guy I just sort of fell in contact with back then was Pivot or Pivot XXD at the time. Um, he is currently an animator at Jaden Animations stuff. Oh wow! And, and you, you know, and you guys have been friends for like five years. I have something wrong there. I'm pretty sure. I think the earliest I saw you was like doing a little like speed art of like of one of his characters and then saying like happy birthday. Oh yeah, it was around that time. Um, and of course some other people at the time and so on. And I saw them all doing like story time. I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to try it myself. But the problem is since I was bullied, my story times aren't as funny or nice as others so i have like some really terrifying and horrible stories where i sometimes in normal conversations i just bring these things up and people around me are like excuse me that's not normal and i'm like <laughs> uh it isn't <laughs> yeah insert, insert senior payload meme oh, wow oh, that's not relatable <laughs> basically and, and yeah. everyone ends up crying in the end <laughs> Yeah. No. And then uh, usually I have to like, if I animate them, or I, I try to animate these stories before, but then in the animation process, I get like really sad because I relive these like memories. No. No, Rebecca, no. Yeah, that's why I never like posted that much after 102. And I privated a few because there was one story where someone lit my shoes on fire and I privated that one, I'm pretty sure. Are you serious? Yeah. What is wrong with bullies? What, is it because you're short? I don't understand. I, I assume so. I was always the shortest one in my class. Screw There's that. Only... You know mm. what? Your mom should have bought you like two hawk hand gloves. You know what those are? Like, they're these big hawk hand gloves, right? You slip them over your hand, they got a bar in the middle of it. You just grab them, and it's in a fist. And all you gotta <laughs> do is run around punching people. It would've been well, awesome. Well, uh, my parents got me into, like, fighting sport classes, so I could defend myself. Um, oh. And then I kind of damaged my uh, foot, and then I couldn't dance or go to sport classes anymore for a while. Oh, wow. How did you end up damaging your foot off of, like, someone's, like, head or something or like nah, you it's landed a, it's, a, it's a bit silly um so we had these classes uh, i was doing jiu-jitsu or jiu-jitsu which is um kind of like ju judo but like different I, I can't really explain it but uh we were doing exercises and kicking basically um where we have one of those gymnastic balls and we throw them against the wall and then we kick it back again and then it bounces back right yeah um and i was doing that but the thing is since i'm small the balls are really big um and i had to high kick higher than my weight actually can handle right yeah so i came my my foot came onto the ball like really crookedly and it damaged the 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 you know on the back on your foot the, the, the your, thing. your achilles heel yeah exactly it damaged that oh my god did it ever the, heal correctly yeah yeah it, it just was like uh uh like strained or yeah, like sprained yeah. or whatever they call it like overextended yeah. that could not have felt good and how no. old were you at that time because i think i was like 10 or 9 years old oh my god you're trying to build confidence you're trying to stop being bullied and then you're trying to defend yourself and then you get hurt and then you got to go to school i don't know if you had to wear a cast or whatever and then you just get bullied more i so, think i had a crutch that i borrowed from my grandma at the time oh wow my it, god. It's funny enough the crutch was also too big <laughs> was, no no rebecca's living in a big person's world this isn't fair my god at, at least, at, oh my god! 
at least you had something to at least look forward to, I guess. I would assume because you were so fascinated by animation, at least you felt like there was either drawing or a way to express yourself, like through music, like you were saying, like that you listened to and it helped you. Oh, yeah, the music part you know. was like, yeah. Um, uh, back in the day, I didn't really listen to much music on the way home and stuff, but like over the time, because it got so bad, I just started taking other routes uh, away from school and just getting the like big over ear he- over ear headphones, right? And just yeah. sort of just walking, right? Yeah. And you know what's weird is like from my perspective, like that makes you one of like the coolest people because I loved music a lot. I felt like that got me through like middle school and high school. And mm. like she likes art. She listens to music. Like what part of and she's short and I think <laughs> being short means you're like you're kind of adorable, but no, that just means you're kickable, I guess, or punch like what the fuck is wrong with people? I actually I, like, yeah. I got some what? really interesting stories about my height. <laughs> oh, like what? <laughs> Okay, I also used to do cosplay. As what? What would you cosplay as? I would cosplay different things, uh, like Vampire Knights, that one girl, I don't remember her name, it's been a while. Um, then I would cosplay, uh, I used to fursuit because the full furry thing. So yeah. I was in the fursuit of Apple Bloom from My Little Pony. Uh, yeah, <laughs> hell yeah! And Rebecca. because I was at the first suit, and I had different first suits, right? I had like an OC, I had like the my little pony thing, and I had another OC. And because people, um, people just saw tiny, fluffy, walking creature at convention, they thought it'd be funny if they just pick me up and carry me around like a big teddy bear. Oh my god, bear. no! And it happened more than twice. Like, strangers, stra- I'm giving strangers advice, okay? If you see someone, they're short, and you're like, oh, they're pick a up a bowl. They're pick a bowl up a bowl, and you're just gonna walk up and just, like, carry them around. That's fucking kidnapping. Don't, don't fucking do that to someone. <laughs> That's not cool. My God, Rebecca needs bodyguards just because she's four foot nine. What does that say? We live in a society. What the fuck, man? <laughs> God damn it. Oh my god. Cosplay's cool though. Like it, it just seems like you had a way that you you just want to express yourself and I'm I'm glad it didn't dampen your demeanor or like make you want to stray away from like who you believe you are as a person. And Oh no, you know, it's um I also when I was smaller, um my family was like the best people to like lean on to, right? They're like just amazing. <laughs> and um they sort of taught me how to like get through these things without having a grudge really really yeah so your parents were your support group yeah so that's beautiful not a lot of people have that is there is there any advice you'd give to anyone who's either being bullied or is short as well i don't i don't think being short is a problem but after hearing like all that it just seems like like people like to be annoying to shorter people for some reason well, I would say if you're still younger, if you're under 18, or if you're still going to school and all of that stuff, you know, then I would say just keep doing your thing. It will be over soon. And then you'll be, you know, you'll be away from them. You can still do your thing without getting bothered by them, right? Yeah. So basically you're saying keep your head down, keep a smile on your face, and eventually you'll just be doing whatever yeah. the fuck you want anyway, you know? Because yeah. um, we had a class reunion uh, a while ago and you know they were out of school at least like five years at that point um and so we met up at like a bar and someone pulled me to the side at one point and actually like apologized to me for all the shitty things they have done and they Are were you like serious? yeah they were like we didn't treat you like a human that's fucked up dude oh my god rebecca what did what did that feel like? What did, what... Well, to, to some degree, it's validation that um, what I've been through was legit and wasn't like something I made up or made worse through the passage of time. Because memory can be in, like influenced by different things, right? Um, but yeah, this, this wasn't the case of this, like, what you think could be, but wasn't, right? It was yeah. like a natural thing. That you know, like... That they were actually kind of being really fucked up to you. And, yeah. 
and at least one of them was man enough to like say something about yeah, it. Yeah, it was like a small group. <laughs> one wanted to smoke some weed and wanted to go around the corner, but like stood with us for a bit and like talked a bit. So like it wasn't. A few, it was a few people. Yeah. That's so. That's wholesome, but at the same time, what the fuck, dude? What's wrong with kids, man? God damn. Just let people be people. At least they know they did wrong. And like you said, eventually you just go off and do your own thing, and then maybe they will apologize eventually. I'm surprised you went to your your reunion. You know, I'm surprised I mean, you didn't have like really bad like anxiety over it. You know, I mean, I achieved my goals and where I wanted to be in life in a way. So I was like, I mean, I did what I wanted to do, and you guys didn't stop me. So it's cool. Like I can like talk about this because at that time I got just accepted into university. Yeah. So, uh, and there weren't that many people that got into university from that class. Let's just I say see. that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you're like, eh, I'm doing good for me, you know? And I yeah. feel like a, a lot of people need to learn how to do that and, like, find a support system. I, I feel like you're very lucky you had your parents because not a lot of parents pay attention to their kids. And if, they get, if they're getting bullied and they're not finding a way to express themselves then it just ends up really bad oh, yeah. so i'm the, glad you like, had that yeah like my parents uh, each each year we would always around the holiday time do like big trips around europe right so yeah. they would always give me like a confident boost because for some reason always when i was away from class and just talking with people who didn't even speak german or english and i had to communicate with like hands and feet and stuff i would always instantly make friends right yeah and when i was at home in class i wouldn't so i felt like something was weird about that right yeah so you were like hey well i can be normal around other people who don't judge me but for some reason when i'm at class people judge me really harshly yeah. so you you knew it was at least that environment causing it and that you're not just the type of person that like for some reason people want to pick on it was just that environment where kids were gonna being rude to you or like your classmates it's not strangers like if it probably felt really good that it's like hey i can get along with people like i am normal you know people yeah. don't just see me as a punching bag that that's really nice yeah and i, and I mean th that school wasn't great there were incidents that got people into the hospital and it, actually it was more than one incident in oh one my god <laughs> jesus where were you raised at <laughs> like, i don't know germany <laughs> germany people god damn no not all of germany is like that like my cousin my like small child cousin right she's yeah. going to this uh, same she were, was, was going to the same area, but, like, moved into the city. And the schools in the city seemed to be better than where I went. So they were like, oh, we got, like, we got, like, teachers that do, like, really well. And they were, like, like being really happy and, like, happy about their school time. And I'm, I'm listening to that. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so glad they're having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, they don't have to go through what I would do. Thank God, man. Yeah. Thank God. And it sucks because uh, I know people who are from Germany that, or, like, they have Germ Germanic, um, like, they have, their ethnicity is German. So mm -hmm. they're, like, six foot, too. So I can only imagine being four foot eight in a six foot, six foot society. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Like, That's my brother horrible. is, like, two heads taller than me. Is he? <laughs> yeah. What are your parents? Are your parents short, too? Or is, like... No, no. It, it sometimes skips generations. So my grand grandma on the Austrian side was really t uh, tiny, but, like... um. Oh, yeah. I'm also partially Austrian, but, like, it doesn't nice. come up too often. No. Because so. it's so close to German, it's, like... No one fucking cares. <laughs> right. Yeah, they are really close to each other. I learned Germany, a little bit of Germany in college. Um, okay. Whew. Well, that I cried. I laughed. Let's let's move on. Um, I'm okay. glad. I'm glad all that didn't affect your your sense of humor because I noticed you you kind of do have kind of a shit post equality at times. Like when you're on your YouTube channel, like once mm. upon a Discord server. Like I wouldn't call it shit posty as much as it is like. <laughs> Just like a quick laugh. Here's a 13 second animation. 
that I find funny has me in it and it's hilarious. Like, yeah. or like, or like Ducktales has a knife meme and it's it's the it's the kid that's like the mom's like, what do you have? have? And he's like, a knife. And he starts running, except you animated it as Ducktales, yeah. and that was hilarious. And then there was also um, they have noticed me. It was uh, it was a little just short little film where like you're eating and you have hot sauce, and then someone says, hey, the the people that you look up to are following you now or like are acknowledging you and you just spit out hot sauce i I like how you have a sense of humor still and then i fucking support art theft by the way (laughs) yeah that one that one is interesting i i don't still don't get it because it (laughs) it's wild i don't that was bold statement that was a bold deviant art statement rebecca going back and forth with someone who was like, I, in the end, they were like, I fucking support, support art theft. And like, okay, buddy. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm um, glad you made fun of it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like some people online just have that sort of thing written all over them. Where they, like, you don't, usually you wouldn't make fun of a person, but it's like, it's so easy. Like, it's so fucking easy to do. And I'm weak when it comes to that sometimes. Yeah, I see. I see. Just to, easy target. Go and hit it. It's yeah. fun for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, I don't... I don't like to be like that, right? But when they come out of nowhere after like a weird discussion and come like with like the weirdest fucking statement, where it's like like suddenly someone denying the Holocaust or some shit like that, right? Like we were talking yeah. about something different. It's like what the fuck? <laughs> You're like, hold think... on, we need to stop everything we're doing right now and just acknowledge what this person just said. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that's a that's a crime here in Germany, so. What? Oh yeah, yeah, it is. You get thrown in a uh, jail or no? Fuck. You get a fine, I'm pretty sure. Oh, you get a fine. Just it depends how, how strongly you do it, right? It always depends. Yeah, there's levels to it. There's, there's levels to it. That's awful. Um, so we're talking. We we we're talking about like your early communities. Like I would like to talk about like your early inspiration as well. Um, mm-hmm. so the pivots xxd so you're saying he was a story time animator and you guys just like became friends you kind of wanted to do that too I your mean, patreon also launched in 2016 as well yeah so you it just seemed like you're trying to build like either a name for yourself or a community of some sort so what was your early community like like where where did you find oh people to God. interact with my early early community around you know 2010 2015 so that realm uh Gosh, it was really just Tumblr ass blocks. <laughs> of course, of course. But as you as you matured though, and like let's say 2016 era, like as you start figuring out what you want from your community, you know what I mean? Really early, you're gonna interact with everyone. I used to do like mm-hmm. draw piles all the time. Everyone's RPing, but I was just happy to hang out, you know. And like these days, I got a got a stronger grip on what I want. So like 2016 era, what were your community? What was your community focused on at that point? Was was I it a lot more deviant art? Really, or, I think like it really what? started with uh, deviant art OCTs, which are original character tournaments. Because okay. I tried to join one where Zoro was part of it, or you know. Oh, you talking about the animated one that Zoro used to do? Yeah, oh my one. god! Yes. I used to. Oh, I used to, those animations will still make me cry. They're so beautiful. Yeah. I, I used. I love seeing them participate in those. So god. I was trying to get into Walking City OCT, which is. A whole thing. There's so many great animators that came from that, that had, like, their start there. Um, where they would, you know, have different comics or animations betting people against each other or character against each other. And I wanted to get in, and sadly I didn't because I was very much a noob. I was not good that, you know. Yeah. People could still understand my comics, but they weren't anything special. It was very much still the Warrior Cat's furry sort of look with right. slight influences from My Little Pony. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I we, went... were gonna, we were going to let you in, but we, we see the My Little Pony influences a little bit. We just think you need to... Oh no, it that. just wasn't well done. <laughs> it was okay, I see, all I over see. the place, quality-wise. So they noticed you were still developing, basically. They're yeah, like, eh, basically. Still, t- still got some some time to go, I guess. So yeah. that's the that's the community that you kind of 
Emb- wanted to embrace then was like interacting with other animators and having characters right yeah basically so i could learn right ba- yeah i would learn from other people uh like there was someone called um uh, bazo or something fuck <laughs> i'm sorry if you hear this but i think i <laughs> said your name wrong but he showed me for the first time how to actually use uh, flash at the time like correctly <laughs> because now, i was did, i was using it but i wasn't using it correctly how did you guys meet though what like what did you through, were like hey please DeviantArt, help me through divinart oct stuff um and we were what was it on i think either discord or skype because around that time discord was like there was like this switch i'm, I'm pretty sure um hmm. So we would like talk, and he was like, "Oh, you actually can make symbols in Hadoop and uh, in Flash." I'm like, "Oh, you can." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then your mind was blown. You're like, "Oh my god, there's so yeah. much I can do with this." I like that people helping each other out. I'm looking at you, chat, for freaking to help someone out today. If you don't, uh, Rebecca will know, and her OC will like appear in the darkness and just stab you in the chest. <laughs> or like or or rap battle you one or the other what is so one of those is gonna happen i also we run a podcast here right so we promote things we're used to promoting things we're used to talking about things all the time i like how in 2016 you made a simple little animation to help kickstart long uh long gone gulch back in yeah, 2016 long gone gulch. um that was around the time where i you know started the ct stuff and i was like man this this right here i think there might have been like a tweet from Zural or someone talking about it, or maybe from Pivot. I don't know. Like this is like a whole animation sphere, especially also on Twitter. Like people throwing around stuff, and I was like seeing this, and I was like, oh my god, that's so cool. Oh yeah, Long Gone Glutch also had uh, a Tumblr, so that's okay. also a thing I saw. Um, and I was like, whoa, I w- really want to support this, but I'm still underage, I'm still tiny, I don't know how to do <laughs> things, so I'm just gonna make a video telling people about it. So, that's yeah, adorable, that. dude, because you, uh, that's all this, that's all community is, is having so much love for something, you just want to support it just because, and like, I relate to that really strongly, that's, that's pretty much all I do on new grounds. So I like that, I like that aspect of you. Rebecca, you're very relatable, did you know that? Huh. Did you know that there was also epithet erased? That I think yeah. I think from that you you might have liked the character designs a lot maybe or like where did you get the character designs for oh God. like your characters currently like my characters currently oh that's a big big story is it all right yeah so it started when I did the OCT stuff and I had this one character that was like a tiny robot and I was like. Whoa, this is this is a really fun character design, and he was three D modeled. Actually, I was gonna do an OCT with a three D model uh, oh, that damn. I made in Blender, uh, because I also used to go on Second Life and used to do three D modeling for Second Life in between. Oh and my! Get get Lindens from there. I I thought, oh, maybe I can make money because I always had in the back of my mind, I want to make money to move out. Right. I wanted because right. I love my parents, so I wanted to, you know, take away a bit from the pressure of, you know, raising a child already and now you have to like support them in university as well. I never felt like a bit of a leech, you could say. But yeah. it, it's more of my own. Like my parents never said that. It's just my own mentality, right? Yeah, right. So I was like in second life making models and I got a lot of like Linden together, but then like the conversion thing I looked at and it was like nothing. It was like nothing <laughs> <Okay>. money wise. <laughs> it was really sad. So I oh, spent no. the Lindens in game for furry avatars and stopped doing it. No, but I, I had the 3D modeling knowledge, so I was like, "Oh, OCT with 3D models, hell yeah!" Um, hell yeah! But then, like that OCT fell apart. I don't know what happened, and I still had the character design. It was kind of sad that I couldn't use it, so I continued developing it. And I saw the Lung and Glutch stuff, and I was like, "Oh my god, what if I make my own show with this character?" Right? Right. So I had Pi at the start. And this you know, is, is this 2016? When is this? Around, what year is around this? Around that, around that, I would around say. Around that. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah. Exact dates are probably on my DeviantArt, but... Um, so I had Pi, and then I thought, what if what if there's this other robot that's actually small, like the original design, but like, cutesy, 
right? Yeah. So you have the protector and you have the cutesy little robot. Right. Um, so. So you, so you started thinking about character dynamics and the, the idea started growing. Prior to this, did you ever want to create like a, a little world, like your little OC world? Or were you content with just like hanging out with other people's characters? Um, Before that, I would say I thought about that, especially with the back back in the day, the ass blog, right? Yeah. I had like this these characters uh, with elements from like Mill and Pony, the world, right? And then yeah. other aspects. And I would just build this like mishmash of like worlds where my character would live. So I had to like put down some rules and stuff. And then I had um, like a Homestuck spin-off comic as well where I was like trying to build a world. But that never got anywhere because I was, I, I didn't know how Homestuck worked, but I, I, I like the format, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, it's, it's the world building that's fun, I feel. Yeah. But later on, like, I sort of downsized more and more because I realized how much effort everything was. Hell um, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Having to redraw a bunch of things and then draw out the, the, the lore, draw out the areas, draw out, like, everything's got to interact. And if you're committed to a comic, then wh- how often you got to upload it, you know? And t- exactly, yeah. Oh my god. But it's that it's that idea initially. So then you still had the robot left over from modeling or from the yeah. o- OTC. And then OCT, you're like, hey, yeah. here's this other guy that kind of complements this character. And then it sort of grew from there as an idea, I suppose. And then yeah. that's how your characters got, got made. The designs, I, I like the designs a lot. I think the characters are really like they... personable. They used to look a bit different um, because the designs at the start were more round, more uh, like inspired from Cartoon Network shows or like Gravity Falls and stuff like, you know, with the round. And then yeah. um, I was in a voice chat with very much later on when I was already in the animation stages slash animatic stages. Um, I was in a voice chat with Unknown Spy. I, I okay. don't I don't remember how I got there. <laughs> I think I was like, oh look at Discord, haha, <laughs> let me join. Um, I usually do that. I I know a lot of people just because I just joined Discords randomly. I, it just happens. <laughs> and you hang out yeah. though. You hang out with the community and get to know them. Yeah, exactly. You you're for someone who was bullied. It's it's bullshit because you like you're very like relatable and like personable. I like that. I really like that about you. No, oh, thank you. So, so who is Unknown Spy? Describe describe Unknown this person. Unknown Spy is an animation meme animator. They're really really big, um, but they also I think they're working on their own series, and their uh, like animated characters are based off of um, I'm pretty sure like Stickman, but like like three D esque. Not three animation, but like they're not more three dimensional. They're like thick and curvy, and it's known that they can draw very sexy characters, but they animate them, right? Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, if you look up Unknown Spy, you'll just know, right? Um, right. So I was in a VC with them, and we were like, you know, talking. They were like doing their thing. So I showed off uh, the characters and I was like really excited about, you know, getting to the next stage because I was finished with the animatic, right? Yeah. Um, so I showed that off and Unknown Spy was like, hey, uh, you know, you can design them better. Let me do this real quick. So they took the, basically the lineup I've drawn and they overdrew it with like how to fix it up and they added color and everything and taught me quite a bit in like, one voice call about character design and that oh was God. really cool so i'm now using these character designs these revamped ones for the series oh my god from someone that like you i don't know if you looked up to him at the point but from someone who is like kind of like big in the art they just decided to help you out yeah what is there anything you could share from like that experience like what did he say about the initial designs that needed to be better um I think it's a she, by the way. I'm not quite sure. Oh, she. What, what Sorry. I don't mean, I don't mean to suggest gender. I'm just... I'm st- it's whatever. It's whatever. Um, I would say, I don't know. It it was cool. It was cool. Um, there were some other people who were a bit more shy. And 
um, I think I accidentally, okay, some other people in that server were there and I'm, I don't know their ages or anything, but I think I gave someone some like critique on their artwork, like they asked for it, right? Yeah, yeah. And then turns out it wasn't even their artwork. It was someone else's artwork. And that person got really sad because their art got critiqued without them oh, knowing. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that was like a that whole thing. Sad. I don't know who that was anymore. It's been a fucking like two years or some shit. But I remember that. And I'm like, that happened. I'm not right. in that server anymore, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> So what what didn't he like about the initial designs though? Is what is what I'm trying to get at? And like oh, what? Oh, the how did... Stellapai designs. Yeah, like the the re- initial ones, and then he reworked them, right? So okay, like... so there's one character called Ethan, and he's supposed to be a bit of a mechanic slash uh, wasteland dweller uh, slash robot engineer, and I had him in the hoodie, sort of like. Like a red sands sort of looking dude. Okay. <laughs> if you want to say it like that. Um, and, you know, they saw it and they were like, hey, uh, this is not screaming mechanical engineering guy. This sounds like a guy, or like that looks like a guy that sits on the couch and eats Cheetos at home <laughs> while nothing is happening, right? Oh, no. Yeah. Like two gamers on a couch feeling, right? Um, right. So that was one of the criticisms. And then the colors were not that great. Um and other aspects i i can't really explain it like without visuals really but right that's and sort but of it thing. was like it was like a really good moment though oh, as yeah, far definitely. as you can remember and it's really nice of someone to do that for you especially just yeah. like out of the blue like that i always everyone support artists who support artists it, it's it pays itself back if anyone gives you advice be sure to to make sure that they know that you appreciate it and um I like this. So he he basically took your initial concepts, was like, "What do you want to do with this?" And then he helped you do it. And then you're like, "This is amazing. Thank you." And that's that's mm-hmm. pretty much what happened. I like that. Everyone, go go find random discords. Join them all. Join every single one. I want to see all your discords filled up, and then just just freaking talk in them, hang out with people, and then you know meet like minded people, and yeah, you never know what'll happen. Let's oh. move on to yeah. oh what what? I don't know. Go on. No, oh, you you ain't got you don't have nothing to add. Uh, I just wanted to add one thing uh, when it comes to people who are helping or help me out a bit. Um, there's one thing I'm not quite sure about anymore because there was um, there's gonna get, there was gonna be a trailer right for the show. Yeah. Uh, like oh, here all of these cool scenes that's gonna be in the show and everything, right? And. Josh Tomer gave me some lines for that. What? So I, I just what? want to say thank you if he has ever hears that. Oh, he's All been right. interviewed on this podcast. I'll snip I'll that and I'll I'll freaking I'll tag him with it. Thank you, yeah. Joshua Tomar. Your bald head helped Rebecca Doodles because you gave her voice <laughs> it's, lines. It's not even out yet. It's not out yet, right? But you know, it's just cool. I just wanted to say thank you again. Thank it's you, been Joshua like years. Tomar. It's been years now since then, but yeah. He goes by Do now. He goes by Do. Do? Yeah, Do. That's his name, name now. Do. It's a. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You got. That's when we interviewed him. It was for the the short film he did with Almighty Hans, which is called Mutton Chops. If anyone wants to go check that out, Joshua Tomar he plays Do, and he says Ooh, Saviors of Life. life they, call they call him. So if you ever want to like make him blush, just call him Do, and he'll love it. All right, <laughs> we're gonna move on now. We're gonna go to something else I find like really important about you. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna talk about your persona transformation over time talk about and i feel like this also plays into how i feel you reach out to the community and how you kind of put your personality out there you try to interact with others also i want to warn you that we have 12 minutes left but we can go as long as you want it's up to you i have a lot more to ask you but i'm just gonna warn you i'm just gonna say that now you know you're welcome to stay as long as possible but i'm not gonna force you to stay here so we'll talk about what oh it's just the meds kicked in i'm good now (laughs) (laughs) If anyone wants to be on the podcast, bro, you gotta take meds before you talk to me, and you'll fucking you'll stay here all day with me. Trust me. Other than that, I'm I'm intolerable. 
Um, first, of, I'm just kidding. Rebecca, Rebecca took medication because she's not feeling good today, and it's just kicked in. So everyone, can I get a clap in the audience? You know, we're doing good. We're doing great today. We finally reached the three fourths point of the show, and I'm asking Rebecca Doodles about her persona transformation. So, you know, I saw your your me dot mp4 animation on YouTube. And there's a sign that says "Will Art for Money," and and the music that was playing. I don't know if it's yours or not, but it was like really called music, and it just seemed like that was you, just kind of showing, like your personality a little bit. And that's with your your persona, who was blonde at the time. So, is there anything you can say about early Rebecca Doodles? Um, early Rebecca Doodles, the character, I guess. Yes, um, yes, yes. It was basically just me. And if I if I had a different clothing on that day, I would just change up the clothing on my character, really. Oh, nice. Um, and, yeah, it was a, a way to reach out to a lot of people because I couldn't visit anywhere because it's all, like, American people usually or, like, around the world. So the first time I really drew my character like that was when I wanted to really hug a friend. So I drew this little picture where I hug one of my friends and my character is standing on a few books because she's really small to give him a really good hug. <laughs> this so, is horrible. Yeah, that's like, how it started. Now, when did the thought of will art for money, like when, because to me, all that says is, and not everyone follows it up. A lot of people are like, hey, I'll go broke and do art for my whole life. But not everyone follows that up. So at what point did you think it was do or die for doing art and animation that this is what you want to do? And it just like, you said five, five years, years old, old right? right? But yeah. when did you seriously were She's like, like um, this is me? I think, uh, you know, uh, first grade to fifth grade. What what school is that? That's, uh, grade um, school. Yeah, yeah. So I would say at the end of grade school. You just knew. God, yeah. you're so confident. Jesus. You're so confident. I love it. The confidence. I I love it. You just you just knew you want to do art. And it's and I don't want to placate to anyone that, hey, you you should start for your art because it's a very toxic view. But a lot of people are willing to go that length. And I think it says a lot about their character. If they really back it up. And seeing you uh, put your personality out there all the time, it's mm-hmm. it's something that... I could at least nod my head to and be like, okay, yeah. you know, like, like I, I respect it. When I was at grade 10, we had like one last presentation we had to do right before like ending school for that, you know? Yeah. And um, I had a whole thing about the history of animation, like Lente- uh, Latin Magica. And I had like a full on flip book and like, the little spinny top with the pictures in it my mom got me to present. And oh my god. Yeah, I'm very educated. And that was just, you know, grade 10, right? Yeah. And I showed a presentation also, like, how my character looks and how it's, like, design-wise and everything, the design concept. And no one in the room knew how animation worked because they weren't, like, you know, professors for it. It was just normal, like, high school teachers that didn't know anything. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I got a one. Like, one is good. Like, that's, like, the okay. highest grade you can get. Because I thought, I, I thought you were about to tell me they gave you a five, like, the equivalent of, like, the worst. <laughs> like, no, I got... no, no, no. <laughs> so they loved it, basically. Yeah. And I'm sure all your classmates loved it too. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure it didn't sure. sound like gibberish or like that. It, it it's weird because you show something new and it, it's like opening a new world up to them. You know. Mm. Uh, one of the teachers also has a daughter who used to love me because they were like <laughs> a day of the open door. We call it over here, where you know families can come over and look at pro- process or clubs and whatever. And the the child really loved uh, the way I showed my because I brought my graphics tablet to yeah. um, to the art club thing because they didn't have that money or anything like that. So I showed that off, and the little girl loved it so much because she drew a little drawing in my art program on the laptop, right? Oh my god! And I I printed that out and gave it to my teacher because you know it's her daughter and. 
she she was like mad for some reason. I think she didn't like it that I was such an idol to her daughter suddenly. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. That she, explains everything now. That, that explains didn't everything. Like me. They didn't like you. That's bullcrap. That explains everything. Everyone's just threatened threatened by you, Rebecca. They knew your power level, <laughs> and they, they didn't want to see you grow. They didn't want to see you uh, become the badass you are today. So I see your persona. I see it start transforming a little bit. I feel like the first sign of this was with your bad karma meme, where <clears> your persona ends up like it's music-based. You know, you got the love for music, and it's a meme, so it's really fun for you to do. And she's going through, like, the beats or whatever, and then she ends up with blood on her, and she's looking kind of, like, crazy. When did, That's when the crazy started settling in a little bit, I guess. And and is there anything you could say about, like, what you were feeling at the time that made you want to change your persona even just slightly into that direction? Um, I would say it was the fact that this might be a bit controversial, but I started drawing really fucked up shit early on uh, as a vent. And yeah. I thought at some point, instead of it being a vent, it just sort of became me. Okay. Because of all the history I've been through and, you know, the bullying and everything. So Absolutely. I thought it slowly was like... I am just accepting that these people see me as a monster, so I'm sort of just, you know, transforming myself into a monster visually, right? Yeah. And it would also sort of feel like it's protecting me to some degree. Absolutely. It's your way of, uh, of like, expressing how you feel. Um... Tom Falp said something crazy like that with uh with Pico School because you know how it's like the goth kids taking over the school whatever and he wrote it for like April Fools when he made Pico School too and he was saying he just wanted and I don't know if this is an old interview I don't even know if this is from like a video or something I read him type but he said he said I just wanted to show the side of the kids that are outsiders and how they feel that's just and it, of course it depends on how you interpret Pico School but I think he did that mm -hmm. he showed how how isolated people can get to the point where they like they snap or they feel so different they don't see other people as like humans and and hearing you transform your actual persona into i don't want to call it a monster but into someone that's like that's just embracing all the the hate or the the bullying that people are giving you that that's like that's very i don't want to say brave but it's like it's like it's very relatable. I, I I want to stop saying that word though. It's like <laughs> I'm glad you did it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad you f you had that to like vent. I'm glad you you made Rebecca kind of be like, okay, if this is how you guys want me to be. That's fine. I'm glad to be this way. You know, you didn't let it get you down. You just you embraced it. Yeah, because to some degree, if I was acting slash doing these visuals and stuff. They would also leave me alone because I was too weird for them at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, that's a that's a real tactic. That's a re like okay, screw you guys. I'm so weird. You want to hang out with me? Good. And then you eat a bug or something. <laughs> you know. I um I brought a knife to school. So. Did you? Yeah, it got confiscated. No. It got confiscated. No. Did you get suspended? No. No, they were just like, hey, you can't have that. Like, oh, Yeah, okay. because I wasn't threatening anyone. I was just... Okay, that day, like, because I travel so much, my father has this, like, pocket knife, and he got me and my brother also a pocket knife to uh, carve, you know, little, little sticks if we are in the woods and shit, right? Because we're yeah. camper natures, right? We, we've, been, we've been in the woods in, like, every country next to Germany, basically. Like, we've been, like, all around there. So I had this knife... So I brought it to school because I was like, you know, I have nothing to do in in school anyways when it's on, on break because we're not allowed inside on breaks. We have to always stand outside. Yeah. And I thought, why not take a stick from the yard and just carve it in school, right? Because I've got nothing to do. Oh, man. And no, no friends to hang out with, right? So I was like, yeah. why not? And then I also felt sort of good about just showing I know how to handle a knife and so they should know about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sharpening a steak, making direct eye, eye contact. Exactly. <laughs> but That's like, embracing it for sure. I don't know, someone, someone snitched on me and I got the knife taken away and I never got it back, funny enough. 
I've no, never that gone sucks. Back. I, you know what? I have a very fond memory of the first time my father ever handed me a pocket knife, and I was like, I was like maybe twelve, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. You know, mm. and that's I get where you were feeling with that. That sucks. They never gave that back, and yeah. that's that explains why your persona likes knives too. I guess I suppose I suppose. Yeah. Just absorbed all that information and actually transformed it into your person. I mean, I'm surprised you didn't get suspended. Oh no! Honestly, I don't think I ever got suspended. I've been like I've been a weird kid to a degree, but I didn't do anything wrong, right? Right. Like I visually dressed differently. I never was really feminine. I was like, "Fuck this shit." T-shirt <laughs> pants. I'm good. Why do I need makeup? This shit icky, yucky. <laughs> and it takes time. Hello, I don't have like one hour to spend <laughs> instead of taking more sleep in, right? I, right? I'm I'm drawing and animating at night, and I need my sleep after, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're like I'm doing whatever the fuck I want. Screw you guys, man. Yeah. I know someone. I know someone who brought a knife to school, and uh, and this isn't from my own childhood. It's like uh, it's like my uncle's girlfriend's son. He brought a knife to school and he got suspended for eight days. It was like a butterfly knife, and he showed one person, and then he, they snitched on him. So don't bring a knife to school because you're gonna get snitched on. There is that one person that's just gonna be like, yeah, screw you. They're too cool with the knife, or they make me feel weird because they haven't. An- <laughs> I'm just gonna say something. Yeah, then- but the. The weed kids got never snitched on, right? They always, like, were in one huddling corner trying to have the backs to the outside so no one can see what they're doing inside, Yo, right? of course. They're smoking weed there. <laughs> you always <laughs> smell it, right? But, like, yeah, oh, of course. But they're the cool ones. Oh, they're the cool weed-smoking kids. We're not going to tattle on them. Let's, let's, just, <laughs> <laughs> let's just pick on Rebecca until she has another nosebleed. Like, Jesus. Fuck. Yeah. And then I finally saw I finally saw your skin color turn blue. And well, it's I not think, blue. It's not blue. It's white. What? Wait. What? Oh, it's like oh, it's like pale. It's like a. Yeah. It's like a. So the, the I, blue part is more the shadow, really. I oh, like to call sense. it shading in my drawings, but if I do a quick color without shading, it usually is just white. Okay, that makes sense. I was um I was drawing your like little birthday. Thing, and I was like, what color is her skin? And I just like started choosing blues. I'm like, none of this looks right. She looks like she's like like part smurf or like a something, like a lizard or something. So it, it did turn into like a really pale, like white is what it, I guess that makes a lot more sense. But I saw that finally like take transition. You just enjoyed like that color? Like you just, because you went from like blonde hair, uh, like. F- normal skin color to blue hair red eye like pinkish eyes like everything just kind of transformed and i saw it the first time in like the top 10 worst youtube channels is what i saw it in yeah so that all changed because i really enjoyed the dark mode on twitter the colors yeah so when you liked something you had the pink right and you had the blue outside, and I really enjoyed that, so I just took that as a color palette and went with it. That's really wait, weird. wait, it's from where? Wait, when you like something, it's the it's... Twitter. It's a Twitter dark mode, basically. The... Twitter dark mode is it's the color Twitter... scheme. It all makes sense now. <laughs> Rebecca Doodles is Twitter dark mode. Yeah. Oh my god. I like that. And chat, no, I didn't mean to say normal skin color. I just mean like rosy, like ro- like flushed, like you have actual like blood. Fl- I don't. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, Rebecca Doodles confirmed Twitter dark mode, and I, lo- I love that. I can see your persona totally living inside of that atmosphere. Cause and just the final colors I really decided on was like one drawing that I post on Twitter because I was like, what if I. What if I make it like look like it is from Twitter, this like drawing of my Sona, right? So it's like, looks like weirdly official because of the colors. And then yeah. I had a speech bubble next to my Sona being like, oh, everyone is cancelled because Twitter told me so. <laughs> I've seen that. Yeah. I've, se- I've seen that drawing. When was that? It's been a while. I, I like uh, yeah. Oh, it's been a while. You said that like like you're old man. Like you're just like it's been a while. Nah, fucking COVID gets me like really confused time wise. So I can't tell. 
That's true. Uh, we were in lockdown. We we're in quarantine, actual quarantine over here last year of April. And it still feels like a freaking eternity. Mm. I remember talking to everyone else on the podcast. I'm like, dude, we're at 50 episodes. And we're all like, what? We're like, what? Oh, my God. And time is ticked. But I liked your, like, little edgier versions of yourself. I've seen a lot of, like, comics where, like, it's it's actually playing on how Twitter culture is. And, like, oh, I'm complaining about something. And then maybe your OC's like, okay, well, why don't you fix it? Or, no, no, no. Someone was like, hey, you're this and that. Why don't you tell people about it? And you're like, I don't like displaying things just to get attention. Or, like, I don't care. Like, it was... Yeah. It's... It's basically, I like what you represent in, in not wanting to grab attention. You're just who you are. Like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, it, it was the flag comic that you just described, where it's like um, a lot of people will use random gender flags to that doesn't even represent them just to be part of this community. But this community is, how should I say it? It's very sensitive, and if you don't know enough about the certain topic, you're a very easy target for people who just are out for um, trouble, really. There, yeah. There's people out there that just will criticize each little pebble. Like, someone gets a Starbucks drink and says, Oh, hey, this is a pretty good Starbucks drink. Not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> and another person will be like I don't like Starbucks because they're homophobic or something like that this is just a stupid example right and then yeah. they're like what, what, what are you saying and then they do like a full on call out post because one person got Starbucks and not I don't know uh, Dunkin Donuts right Yeah. Um, so it's like very silly things that I don't want to be part of so I'm very not into the mood to be part of this right right you don't like you i don't know like... i know not all people are like that but there is this weird teen majority that uh, transferred over to twitter since tumblr shut down porn for some reason i don't know why that happened or, <laughs> you know you know i don't know why they suddenly transfer over to twitter because of that because they are teens right oh newground has got a huge a huge tumblr search too yeah so um I, I just don't want any trouble, and I feel like that smells like trouble a lot of times. It does, and it, I feel like it's just toxic. I know, it, like, you're trying to call out people, et cetera, et cetera, but it's like banding together with knives and pitchforks. Like, like what did Frankenstein ever do to you? You know what I mean? Like, just let people, like, be who they are. Like, oh, okay, did you know that they're homophobic? Here's this. Like, okay, I get that, but do I have to stop drinking Starbucks now? Like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, it's it's such a it's such a crazy area where people want conflict and that you're not allowed to enjoy the things you enjoy for certain reasons that they think you shouldn't enjoy them and I I'm just I'm not about that at all either. Yeah. Just drama, drama for the sake of drama, right? Am I right? Fuck. Yeah. There's actually is there another point? I I don't want to like. What? Sit. Is there another point on your list? I don't oh, this is, a, this is a, I have so, okay, we, let's, haven't, let's we haven't even reached your F and F mod yet, but you <laughs> okay, can talk, yeah. listen, Rebecca, you're here as long as you want to be here. If, if we need to rush it along or like something's coming up, let me know and I will go through the questions a little bit faster. But right now the stage is yours. Okay. okay. Um, it was just because of my Friday and Funkin mod that exists now, um, there's a lot of people that get attracted to me that are more on the the sadder side of life you could say yeah but they also now like you know go on my twitter and stuff and like just when it first came out there were a few people that came in and were like my problems are now your problems because you made a thing that has your problems in it Wait, explain that a little bit better. Their problems are now your problems because you made because you because said I something. Made a, because I made a mod, basically. Oh, okay, oh, okay. So I get they that. like, oh, I relate to you. That means you have to relate to me. Oh, okay. That's that's different. That's uh, there's a word for that, and I, it's escaping me. But it's very toxic. You're not, you're not supposed to like. Oh, I like this guy. Now he's my father. I know I do that to Tom Falp a lot, but I'm not serious, guys. Unless, 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 I get what you're saying though. Yeah. They, they, they become so attached to you, they want you to be an actual part of their life. 
Yeah, I mean, there's some that are more respectful and it's completely fine and we talk and we see and everything is fine. But there was one person in particular that was suddenly throwing all of their problems at me. And then I said, can you not? Because it's like a bit disturbing me and I don't know you, right? Or right. then like they kept on kept on doing like some conversation with a different person and at the end I was like, um, can you please untag me in this conversation because this is not related to me anymore and then they blocked me. It was very very weird. Let's just say that. And there are still people that do that and it's I don't understand it. It's it's almost like obsessing like over someone to the point to where like they feel physically hurt or like emotionally unstable because they like you so much, but also they don't want you to make them mad or upset or also hate you. You know what I mean? Their mm. love turns into hate. Hate is almost stronger than love in a way. So they appreciate you so much they're willing to to be mad at you for something too. You know, like mm. it's that's crazy. And but it's it's expected. That's what a big fandom does. I can only imagine how many people like message Tom Falp or message like big creators is like, hey, you changed my life now. Uh, now no, I hate you. <laughs> yeah, no, I hate you. <laughs> That's just the normal steps that we take. Um, uh, keep staying on track with the Sona. You have the male persona. Is that the that's it, right? You got Rebecca yeah. Doodles, and then there's Ben. There's Ben. So Ben was only created because people were confusing my son as a guy. So I was like, what if what if there's an actual version of that? Because at the time, I didn't think Starving Artist was going to be this big thing. So I, I sort of was like, you know, if you see the character as a guy, you know, whatever. Do what you like, you know, I don't care. Yeah. Um, and that was because I thought, oh, it's just going to be the small thing. But then people are like actually arguing in comments like, is it guy? Is it girl? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> They're going nuts. Like, they don't know how to update the wiki. They're like, oh, God, God, zoom in, zoom in, enhance. <laughs> <laughs> is there a bulge in the pants? Is there? <laughs> <laughs> They're breaking it down. They're taking the sprite apart. <laughs> pixel by pixel. <laughs> um so, so that's that's yeah, why he came to be. Yeah, basically. that's why he came to be. And then I thought, now that I corrected it by saying, oh, it's a girl, whatever, a lot of people still enjoyed Ben, just visually. So I was like, what if I make him an actual character? So he's not only like the male version of my Sona, now Ben is an actual character in this world I created for my Sona. And how, do, how does that feel? How do you think Ben's personality is compared to Rebecca's? I basically turned, uh, because I love true crime, and I listen to a lot of podcasts and, you know, just media and horror media, Hell I yeah. turned Ben into a serial killer, but he's like, he's like, um, doing it for some really sketchy means, and he is the janitor of Rebecca's building. So he has access to like all of the living spaces, basically, and he has a very cushy place to do his killings. Oh my. Oh my. Ben's just a rogue agent. Yeah. <laughs> and that just represents kind of like the fun you have from true crime. I, it's interesting. And I, Rebecca doesn't share the same sentiment, right? I mean, do they even... I've seen um, I've seen you I've seen you rank ships, right? I've seen you rank like oh, the ships yeah. that people make. And when it came to Ben and Rebecca, it was like three hearts out of five and then he stabbed her. Like or three <laughs> hearts out of four or something or two. I can't remember. Yeah. I would just love to see like um like a cr fake crime documentary almost about Ben and Rebecca and how Rebecca is still you know, how they like were confronted or some shit you know how these like true crime documentaries go that would be ah. just a very interesting like you know story to read or something right right like there's a dead body there's like small clues and then exactly. there's like protagonists that are trying to get ben but ben's uh, ben's aware of rebecca obviously but he he's either trying to kill her or she's not aware of him like they have this interesting mm. dynamic maybe they cross paths every so often you know what exactly. i mean like that yeah, yeah. just sounds cool especially because rebecca is portrayed as this like sleep deprived character like maybe she doesn't even notice that all these things are going on like that things are slightly off and he can get away with it you know that oh just yeah sounds she doesn't know she doesn't know at all <laughs> this sounds really interesting i and, love that yeah Ben is always hiding boys from her, just just in like, uh, 
you know, just in time to, like, she walks over and is like, hey, you, you take out the trash? And he's like, uh, yes, yes, it's trash. <laughs> this is trash. That's strawberry jelly. <laughs> yeah. This is trash. What's the knife for? Uh... <laughs> Cutting roses. I like that. I like that. Like, she could literally just be like, just going throughout her day and Ben's murdering someone in the background. I, that's yeah. cool. I, you're, that sense of fun you're having from world building is so apparent. And I like how your community contributed to that by being like, is this a boy or a girl? I don't, it's, Rebecca's yeah. kind of flat chested and also relatable. I kind of want to be a boy. Oh, I kind of want to be a, a girl. Now we need both because yeah. people demand it. Um, have there been any doodle sonas? Have people made, like, Rebecca sonas? Is there anything like that? Yes, like, yes. So, what are your favorite ones, or what are the most cringy? Um, okay, so that was a thing uh, people are doing, or used to do. It's, it's calmed down just a tiny bit, which, you know, it's whatever. But they do gacha life stuff, especially on TikTok, I've seen. Oh my. Of, uh, their Rebecca sona with, um... With like tape around their arms, this like uh, caution tape, and I didn't quite know what that was about because it wasn't a few ones. And caution tape is like really bright and not the color scheme that Starving Artist is slash Rebecca. So I was like asking around, and then someone said, "Oh yeah, that stands for self harm." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> That's wild. I actually like so, that a little bit. I think yellow complements the blue a bit because it stands out so much. Like you have Rebecca that's kind of like toned down, like very pale blue, and then you have this bright yellow like contrast to it. I kind of like that. I think they're on the opposite sides of the color wheel though. I think blue and yellow are. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but like the my favorite ones are probably the ones that go really out there. Like someone made a version of my Sona that's like a feathery dragon. And then uh, there's someone called Amelia Doodles who did like different versions of my Sona, which all kinds of things, really all kinds of things, furry, non-furry, um, what was it? Then there's the Rebecklets that probably not a lot of people know about. Rebecklets? Like, <laughs> Rebecklets, yes. <laughs> That's it, awesome. It originated from my server, and it's basically like a like a little little tiny dog thing, which is like you chop off the head of my Sona and add just little four legs, and the the teeth are a bit bigger and like bigger maw, right? So it's like this little creature that runs around. <laughs> That's awesome. What does he What does he do? I don't. Or what is it? What is it? What is it, what, is it, what do they do? They eat. It's aggressive. It's tiny. It's kind of cute. They just fucking eat. They're like a, they're yeah. like little fucking demon minions. Yeah, <laughs> little gremlins. Yeah, they don't speak. I love that. They're like little dogs. Yeah. Now, now let's transition off the pers persona, but with a final question. What do you think? your persona represents for people as well as like their own sonas that they make out of it like what does that represent you think for people who draw them and like have fun with your oc uh what do it represents to them yeah. um i think to some degree it's like people can just use my character and make their own vent art with it in a way which is like oh, okay. which is good because then they can you know let out a bit of frustration i feel like that's a positive thing because then you don't have to let it out on other things around you, right? If you right, which is originally why you started drawing your persona like that yeah. with the blood. I like that. Just, you, you think that's that's like that's the extent of it? Is that that's art? part of it. Um, otherwise, I think some people just sort of like it. Yeah. I do. I like. I like it. I like knives, and I like the the blood. Like it reminds me of like Dangan Rampa. If anyone in here has played that, like the pink blood. I like that. It's not. It's not aggressively red. It's just like pink, and it's and it's kind of cool. Like you, she's always having fucking nosebleeds, you know. Yeah. So, the pink blood actually a lot of people think it's inspired by Dangan Rampa, but it's not. Uh, it was inspired by actually. There was to, there was once I think a Japanese uh, artist on Pixiv. I'm pretty sure it's been like years, right? But they drew Rick and Morty fan art, and they always used to use pink blood. And I was like, "Whoa, that looks cool!" And that just was like cemented into my brain, and I really wanted to recreate that at some point. So yeah, that was the point. Perfect. I think it reaches a really good aesthetic. 
I like it. Like I said, I think Rebecca is a character like the blues and the the monotone. She she's almost like a background character. Like if she's standing in and, and there's we can match her up with like a thousand different characters. Like Rebecca is going to be like blue, like just blue and pale. But then mm-hmm. when you got the pink blood, it just makes it stand out. Like there's that spark to it. I lo- I love that. And there's a lot of fun you can have with that. Yeah. Like I liked I liked when I drew um you little I drew you a little like birthday like uh, art or whatever, and when mm-hmm. I drew that, I thought it was fun that I could make the icing the color of the blood too, you know. And it just it just looks like fun. You just the it, it, so you need to draw Rebecca Doodles to understand how fun it is to to color pink blood because <laughs> it's there's a joy to it that I can't yeah. explain. So let's let's go into the meat and potatoes. Um. We're not going to touch on that one thing yet. That's actually next. Let's do Stella Pie. Let's do the Stella Pie. Stella Pie, a short, which came out in 2017, which is actually drawn on paper. And all the characters that it involves in the pitch you did to Adult Swim, basically what you envision for Stella Pie and, and what it's done for you as a creative and what you expect from it in the future. Okay, so it started out as like this really, really short action short with Stella and Pi. We already talked about how the character sort of came to be. Um, but, you know, I, I was like discussing in some server. I, I'm not sure which server it was. It might have been uh, the Psychic Pebble Smiling Friends server at the time. Okay, okay. I'm not quite sure. Anyways, I was talking with people and um, someone, or maybe it was the OKKO server? You're a part okay. of so many servers, it's probably just a blur at this point. I met this person, yeah. this one, this one, and this one, this one, and this one. There, there's a lot of stuff. Anyways, I was talking with some people, and someone gave me, um, uh, they gave me a link to a video of I'm Ian James Curry talking about, um, how to make a show, or, like, how to start out, or stuff like that, and... I watched that and it really inspired me to take this little short idea that I already storyboarded out and make it into something bigger. So I posted about me taking this short and how it inspired me and I tagged Ian in that. And then he commented on that and was Whoa. like, hey, you know, like positive. Uh, I have it printed out and actually on my wall right here. It Are you says, <laughs> yeah, it says, keep working, don't give up. Aww. Oh my god. <laughs> Positive vibes. Yeah, it's above cutouts of uh, the heads of, uh, which I printed out. And I drew it myself and I printed it out and then I put it on my wall. And it's Steve Universe, the uh, OKKO Kid, and Craig of the Creek, the Craig. Hell so, yeah. you know, a little, little, little motivation, inspiration, you know. Oh yeah. Um, it, starts to, it starts to feel like something you can actually do when people are like, hey, this is cool, do it. And you're like, okay, well, I probably should. This guy designs shows, like, it's kind of fun. Yeah, and you know? I I used to be, well, I, I still like it. Ian also did Knock Force, so I really enjoyed that back in the day. And I was like, why is Knock Force gone? Where is Knock Force? When they stopped uploading. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, your Love early inspirations. Thing. Yeah. How it f- how it feels to interact with your, the people that inspire you to be who you are, or like to animate, you know, to create. It's yeah. gotta feel good, some kind of recognition. So Stella Pie ended up just becoming something that, like, you could focus on. You wanted to do the series because you liked the characters. You started the world building. You had these ideas, and mm-hmm. then you already storyboarded it out. And then someone's like, "Well, keep going, keep doing it." And then you did, yeah. and eventually you ended up pitching the show to Adult Swim. And they yeah. gave you fifty. They give you fifty dollars. Yeah, they gave me fifty dollars, and I was like, you know, it's it's not a show budget, but you know, it, it, I can do something with it. And I'm pretty sure in the first month, I already spent it on uh, art supplies and food. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I don't, because, I don't understand uh, what they meant. Like you secured the bag. Like is that what they meant? Like you got? Like, yeah, you... I got. I got fifty bucks. That means so, I secured the bag. So did everyone get 50 bucks? And, and like, uh, no, so the thing is, at that time, it doesn't exist anymore because the streams are down. Uh, I don't know, budget cuts or something. I don't know what happened there. But um, basically, they they have around $500, 
right? And then okay. they get the submissions and the little presentations, and then they have to decide who gets how much money off of these 500 bucks. Um, okay. And I get 50, which is not 500, but it was, you know, it was start, and I, I saw that they saw potential in it, right? Yeah. They gave it a big, like, nod. They're like, hey, this is... I like the way they were talking about it, too. They're like, um... I... Although their their one critique was that they thought it should be a comedy, which is, I think you you're still aiming for Stella Pie to be more like adult centered, right? Yeah, it's it's story based. It's like over the garden wall in a way. Now has it has it evolved over time since receiving that criticism, or have you always had just the vision of Stella Pie being a little bit more, you know, like I don't know how to to put it, like adult. I don't know, being a little bit more like risque or a little bit more gritty. You know? I, I want it to be gritty and adult, definitely. Um, it, it transformed a bit because I didn't quite know where to start with it at the, you know, at some points. And it had a script that was for like one hour, basically, an one hour movie almost. And I started, you know, storyboarding it, and I was like, I, I can't do this one hour. I can't animate one hour. Oh my god, alone. one hour. Yeah. Oh my god. So me and Eliza, who's my co-writer, went back to it and rewrote it together. Um, she did some pretty good joke at the end, which I'm not going to spoil, but it exists. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, but she also gave me a lot of hints, and sometimes I was throwing things away that I that she wanted. <laughs> and then sometimes she was like, but this scene is really good in that other show. And I'm like, okay, I'm taking it in. So <laughs> we did like, a lot of banter, but in the end, it's pretty good. And she, she might write some more episodes. I don't know, I don't know what she's doing currently, but... Mm-hmm. Because I, I'm very much focusing on Fire and Funkin, even though I got some other people working with me on Stella Pie. So it's like back and forth and like weirdness. I can't quite explain it. Oh, God. It's like you're running your own little like production going on. Would yeah. you like to give a shout out to like Eliza and like your team right now? Oh, or? yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mo- Mothopus on Twitter. That's Eliza. Um, then let me think. Uh, then, then. Okay, the other one doesn't really have social media, so it's hard to give them a shout out. Okay. Um, but otherwise, uh, you met them through like art. Discord or something. Yeah, uh, yeah, through Discord. Then a little sh- shout out to L Art, who is helping me a lot, uh, and did some boarding slash animatic revisions on Stella Pie. Um, and then a few other people. God, I actually have like such a big list of people that. Are oh my god! Uh, l- little shout out uh, to the the guy that does the Yo Mama voice. Uh, what, what's his name? It's probably gonna be hard to remember everything on the spot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for putting this on you. There's so many people. I bet. It <laughs> it's sounds been like, a like four years. It's four what, years. Like, what do you think is what? No, go ahead. Like, there, there's Hugbees in it, uh, if anyone knows this guy, and, oh god, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, no, it's fine, I'll let you steal on that, but let's let's move on to it, like, yeah. what do you think is the end game for Stella Pie, before we move on from it? What do you, end game, what do, optimal, yes. uh, optimal end game would probably be a complete series with, like, 15 minute episodes or something that'd be great right yeah but what i have currently is i made a complete pilot animatic with voice acting and everything the voice acting is just it's not permanent there still has to be stuff re-recorded but basically that will be chopped up because it's eight minutes currently that will be chopped up in two minutes and we have these little mini sods now nice right? yeah so instead of having one big pilot that I will have to like work on for like at least two years still, it will always like come out a few months apart, like two months. I'm I'm looking for right. Yeah. Uh, that's what. So yeah. That's what Mick uh Mick Lauer uh Rice Pirate just kind of do, does with his series. He chops it up into sections because that way you can release it like in a schedule fashion. I'm I'm assuming like YouTube is your audience or like obviously or maybe you'll post it on Newgrounds too. But, like, your audience is just, like, your community then. Like, you're not trying to pitch it as a show. You just want to work on it and have it out there, is what I'm assuming. And yeah. maybe have, have people attracted to it enough to support the Patreon. 
Yeah, because recently I went to through a friend uh, to a Zoom meeting with the guy or one of the people that made Spyro the Dragon. And because oh, wow. the, the dude is in the industry, I was just like asking like, oh, how do I pitch the best? You know, just a few questions because I'm not, I'm not in California, right? I, I can't yeah. just walk into some studio's door and like, I have this new cool thing, right? Right. Um, <laughs> Everyone look at it. Stop what you're doing. Look at this cool thing I have. Tell me how to market it. Yeah, because yeah. I usually do that because I had, uh, I had like things where I had to like ask companies I would just walk into the company's door and be like, I have this application, hello. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, that's what I do Oh sometimes. my god, the confidence. The confidence. Be ballsy, people. Be Rebecca Doodles. Just walk in there and fucking demand that they that they look at your your stuff. Just do it. I'm looking at you, Stratemeyer. Walk into, walk into No More Heroes' office and be like, listen, I have this. You just drop your drawing off and walk away. That's all I you mean, need. What's the worst thing that can happen? Them saying no, and you're then I walk outside again. Good. You're so brave, man. You're like, oh, then I walk outside again. I get to be outside again. What's the problem? <laughs> That's it. I love it. Not too many people have that confidence. I love it. You just be ballsy. Be brave, people. Yeah. They're humans, too. They just want to look at your shit. Like, I feel like ideas are really valued, and people who have the motivation to actually make them alive, they, they receive the best advice. Like, So what advice could you could you tell us that he gave you about creating Stella Pi? Um, okay. Don't go to the big studios. Don't, don't go to the big studios. Don't go to the big studios. Just do crowdfunding. Because okay. if you go to big studios, first of all, it'll take more time because it has to be passed around, right? They also own part of, of course, the production. So they can do exec executive decisions for you that you might not want. And then also they could potentially just look at it and be like, hmm, I don't know, put you away to the side and say no. And then later on, a very similar show suddenly pops up, right? Oh my god. Yeah. That's so awful. This has happened before. And remember A Bug's Life? Yeah. And then there was this other one called Ants? Yeah. yeah. I'm, okay, that happens all the time. It was weird because when I was like growing up and I was in high school, I'm like, why did two... Why does when one movie come out, like another studio produces a movie that's in the same genre and almost the same... Now, now it makes yeah. sense. That they're going to leech your ideas, so be careful who you show it to, I guess, is is the point. In a way, so there's a certain safety net if you already release it on YouTube and stuff, because the date you release it on Newgrounds, on YouTube, and wherever, right? This date already is proof enough on a court level where you can say, yo, this is my idea, and you took it, right? That That's true. That's true. I saw I saw something weird happen with Satina, though. Hannah Daigle started getting really worried because... There was going to be basically the plot of Satina, but it has Danny DeVito in it, and it's it was going to be a Netflix show, and I, and I felt really bad for her because like someone should just approach them to help to fund their their cartoon. Yeah, you guys, you guys in chat, you can look it up. It's it, it's Danny DeVito. I forget what it's called, but it's exactly the plot of Satina, where it's like, oh, your average everyday office guy, and then he has a daughter from hell. And it's like, what? Yeah. It's like, it's, it's like, very wow. suspicious. But very like people, will, suspicious. people already know, right? If the Satina wasn't out and would have been pitched around places in private, no one would have known, right? At least right. people know that right. there's some That's... suspicious stuff going on. So in some way, shape, or form, like you can post your ideas like a sketch, and then that'll prove that you had that or that original concept, and you can't put a price on an idea. Because uh, that's all people are ever looking for. So pr what Rebecca's saying is protect them. So you pitch them to crowdfunding, you said. Yeah, basically. yeah. Go crowdfunding, go like that, you know, get connections and try it off that. You know, if you get big through a fandom, for example, you can use that to produce your own original things. And then you already have an audience to pitch to, you know, right? Yeah. So not always the audience will not always agree with you right because if it's a complete new random thing like i don't know an asmr channel suddenly makes a cartoon about rock and roll right that'd be like very confusing but right. if it's still something you already did beforehand right like how my stuff is rather grim dark and like spooky and weird and bloody and whatever it's yeah. like it's still more of that but like with other characters right so it's 
it's still in line with everything. Right. You're yeah. Feel free to like branch out and like make different stuff. Well, people fear fear like unique things anyway. Like it's shown in history that like even when it came to like office chairs, like the most sold office chair now originally when it was pitched, people hated it. They're like, this looks awful. Like what is that? And then eventually it catches on. Like so, mm. p- people might not like your stuff at first, but it could catch on. Like tales gets trolled. If anyone learned anything from the New Ground Summer Festival, things just they they catch on. So make your stuff, put it mm. out there, so no one steals your. Free freaking idea and you can sue warner brothers i mean uh what's the moral of the story what's the moral to this story uh i was just saying what i learned from um, this conversation with this right right industry right, person. right i think the moral is uh, approach crowdfunding don't let anyone steal your idea because yeah. i think i think ideas are ah uh, they're invaluable don't uh, one thing don't approach companies let companies approach you oh companies approached you no, like, don't let, don't go to, to companies and be like, hey, this is my cartoon. Wait until companies come to you and be like, hey, I want to produce your cartoon. Well, what what happened with the whole Adult Swim thing? Would you would you have been comfortable if Adult Swim wanted to purchase Stella Pie? Um, at the time, I think it was a way to um, bare bones, really, to get bought, I guess. Let's say they did, though. Would you have been, like, uh, and this is, like, earlier, obviously. Like, m- you know more now than you did then, you know, but... If if that would have been the case, I would probably said yes, but it would have also been a very different show, probably, because it was still in development, so anything could have, you know, been changed at that point. So let me so let me ask you this. What do you think about Zach Hadel, Psychic Pebbles... Uh, letting Adult Swim produce Smiling Friends alongside him instead of just like starting a Patreon, you know what I mean? Instead of crowd getting I it kickstarted. I, I think since he had the opportunity, it's completely fine. It's, yeah. I, th- I, I think don't he's going to learn a lot. I think he's going to mm-hmm. learn a lot from it. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, really. I don't know how much personal freedom he has with this. I'm I'm pretty sure he has a lot because Adult Swim is Adult Swim. Um. But yeah, if you have the opportunity and they already know you, then that's a different thing, of course. But if you are a new person that are, is outside the industry, it's more or like it's easier to get crowdfunding going instead of getting to know people from the studio slash production company and so on. It's really hard if you're not, for example, in America. Because when I pitched, it was around 2 a.m., in the morning for me? Yeah, because you're in Three? Germany. Yeah. yeah, so it's just overall a bit harder. So, yeah, it, it always oh. depends. I see I see Bull Boy telling me Zach's been working with Adult Swim for a couple of years now. So, obviously, yeah. he was comfortable enough to just like be like, yeah, let's do it then. All right. Oh, we talked pitching shows. We talked about Stella Pie. talked about the future for that. We talked about a few people who are on the production of it. What's going on with that? Let's get into the... Into kind of like the biggest, I don't want to say like the biggest thing for you, but I think a big, a really big part of a lot of people's views on the Friday Night Funkin' community and honestly like kind of brought a lot of introspective to themselves, I, I think, because it was relatable. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm going to start off by giving you my first impression because I've never watched the Starving Artist mod. I never played it. I don't play Friday Night Funkin' mods and... um. Uh oh! Can we have an intermission? Intermission? A break? Are we, are we? Does anyone? Does anyone have to use the bathroom before we go deep into this? Everyone's saying yes. All right. Rebecca, are you cool with yeah. the small? I could stretch yeah. a little bit. Are you cool with that? Yeah, we can be cool with that. Yeah, we can have a little intermission. All right. I don't have to keep you all day. I remember, I can just breeze through these if you ever need me to. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Like I, I have pancakes in front of me. I have water in front of me. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm situated, and I don't have anything to do today. So, all right, you're awesome. Thank you for hanging in there. I'm gonna get a granola bar. I'm gonna get a, some right. more water. I'm gonna pee. Everyone, uh, five to ten minute intermission. Ten minute. I'll, right. I'll make it ten minutes. We'll just hang out for a little bit if, if you're cool with that. All right, I gotta, gotta go get some something as well, real quick. Perfect. All right, everyone, break.
thank you everyone for staying with us. I'm gonna eat this granola bar. And my room is really hot. Um, someone sent me a picture, of, no, a video of Oliver. I'm gonna play that right now. Mm. Oliver looks seems to be a gorilla that's eating something. Oh, how am I? Don't eat the granola bar, it's fentanyl in it. Well, Verbank, why'd you poison my granola bar? It looks like this will be my last interview ever. <laughs> Let's make it a good one, boys. What up, Rebecca? Um, how much? Just the cat is screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear it. I can't hear your cat screaming. Yeah, because I locked it outside in front of my door. Oh, no. My dog whines outside of my door all the time. She's like, why can't I come in? I'm like, ah. Nah, like, fucking, the cat is an asshole. Like, just legit. Um, I had a little Venus flytrap, and the cat kicked it down from the window ceiling so much that it died. Oh, <laughs> what? It was, like, already recovering. I'm like, oh, okay, it only happened once. The plant is recovering. I think they, everything is fine. But nope. <laughs> The two he after a, that killed it. He had a grudge against the plan. <laughs> oh no. Rebecca Doodle merch win. Oh, I got merch on Redbubble. Wait, what? I, I got merch on Redbubble. Oh, Redbubble. I thought you said Red mm. Bull, and I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I nah. was like, I was like okay. God damn. <laughs> A uh, quick little rant, but there's so many fucking sponsored things in my DMs, but they're like all like scammy shit. Awesome. They want me to get a virus on my PC, and I fucking dis despise all of that shit. Hell yeah. That's how you know you made it big when people are trying to scam you. Ugh. Yeah. I don't, oh. even get f I don't even get phone calls from scammers anymore. I don't know if that's a thing in Germany, but I don't. no one calls me anymore. No one calls me either, though. <laughs> my, my parents still get called in, like, the home line, right? But, like, my father always... She picks it up and just breathes hev heavily into the <laughs> mouth. <laughs> and then hangs up again. That's awesome. I appreciate everyone that screws with phone scammers. Or ac actually, I feel like we should we should make the... We should do beta. We should become like the beta. And um, just like ex get to know them. And like explain our day to them. And like waste 30 yeah. minutes of their fucking time. You know, <laughs> and like use them as therapy. Like I feel like that's... That's healthy, right? I once I once talked about chocolate for like fifteen min minutes straight with one of the <laughs> scammers. Jesus, they're so desperate too. They'll just they'll just listen the whole yeah. time. Yeah, I'm I'm putting the link to my red bubble into the everyone. Board. Everyone, look at Rebecca's doodle. Rebecca's doodle. Rebecca's <laughs> doodles. Red, red bubble. bubble. We'll look at it together. Some of it three. is a bit stupid. Yeah. I like the Stella Pie sticker. Bat with a knife is fucking sweet. I like that. That's a yeah. cool design. I like that. Yeah, a few are inspired by uh, Apathetic Race because a lot of people wanted merch and there was not enough merch to, you know, for people to get satisfied. So I, I like pitched in with fan merch. How much are, uh, and this might be too uh, personal of a question, because recently we sold t-shirts on Shark Robot, right? And I know how much we made mm -hmm. off the margins, which by the way, everyone in here, we made about $8 off each t-shirt. So we sold 240 t-shirts. That's almost like two grand. How much, how wow. how well are the margins at Redbubble? Uh, I think I got like 15 or 20% from each, each thing sold. It's not uh, bad. It's not bad, but it's also not that great so i would say i got like 50 60 bucks from it yeah okay 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 because a lot of what i like to do is try to find artists like mm. find them ways to make more money like big better margins yeah. you know i wanted that to get in contact with shock robot as well and i sold there as well for a bit but i wasn't big enough to pull anything in um, so. host an event. That's, I mean, that's basically what we did. And you wanna, you just tease something in front of like your community, basically, and you make it limited, so that they feel rushed to buy. It. And we're, obviously, we we didn't do this on purpose or nothing. It's not like we had this like marketing scheme because all the money went to Newgrounds anyway. Like we'll find out mm -hmm. in a month exactly how much we raised, and it all goes to Newgrounds. And um, 
but they wanted us to do a limited run you know because it's just like okay well newgrounds podcast t-shirts like who who the fuck cares <laughs> no well, not like that tom reached out for us i reached out to tom i was like can we market something like this block party and he's like yeah sure i'll talk to the shark robot for you and then we limited ran it and it did well you know what i mean because we had the event and our community is fucking awesome and i love our community yeah. and i'm really proud of everyone for like banding together because you support newgrounds and then you also um you also get something in return so yeah. i would say just like host an event you know what i mean maybe host a limited run t-shirt and see if you can't do something nice for your community and they might respect you for it back too 66 euros not bad Holy yeah so i mean over the course time, of a year yeah, though yeah. Yeah. Over time, yeah. that's not bad like if i could i would do like marketing for artists so they wouldn't have to and then they would even get better margins without having to deal with all the hassle of shipping of printing t-shirts of doing this and that yeah so eventually i want to get into screen printing and then help everyone make good money all right everyone's back everyone's back intermission intermission over uh everyone went pee everyone ate a granola bar drank some water put on something comfy ah that's some good stuff all right Uh, let's get into this yeah <laughs> all right we return i'm with rebecca doodles she's been nice enough to to do an intermission with us this is a long interview but we're you know we're getting everything out there we're having a great time we're talking to people you know yeah don't don't worry about us the audience just really had to pee i did too i'm not gonna lie so i'm glad we're all cozy again all right here we are so starving artist mod like i'm gonna give you my first impression on it and i'm not gonna like hold back on anything that i thought about it i don't play Mm -hmm. fnf mods and i i love fnf i love what it's done for the community so there's no like there's no bias on my opinion and i'm used to hosting art contests and and, like not being biased is what i try to do so here is what i thought of the starving artist mod okay i played it oh i didn't play i watched someone play it and it, I, it wasn't a person, you know what I mean? I'm not watching some YouTuber react. It was just like a straight up, just play through and you just watch it. So starts off with Rebecca Doodles in a room and someone answered the ad and they're like, hey, she's like, hey, you answered the ad, right? I'll do literally, I'll do whatever I can for money. And I, I'm not a good rapper, but here we go. And she starts rapping and you can tell she's like, she's, you can tell from the room, there's Stella Pie, there's. There's even like a little board that says like new grounds and everything else going on. It's it's kind of cluttered and it's really darkly lit. And uh, boyfriend's just worried about rapping. And I'm like, okay, this is pretty good. So they start doing that. And then after the first phase, Rebecca starts like bleeding from her nose, and you see a little bit of blood on the ground. And then boyfriend is like, what the what the hell is going on here? And she's like, don't worry about it. Oh, that's nothing. Like I need this money. So let's just keep going with it. Like she pushes herself through it. And then this the songs, the way that they work is like every time that the, Rebecca does the down arrow, she's like clutching her stomach. Or like if she does the right one, she's like spitting out blood. And it's, and boyfriend's face is like, what the fuck is going on here? And like you play through these whole songs. And after the second song, you're like, she's like, no, this is this is nothing. Cough, heck, heck. Like I... I just want to keep animating. I need this money. I'm so desperate for it. And, like, at this point, I'm getting, like, I'm getting chills, okay? Because, like, I've had depression, like, in the past. And I felt, like, I felt really, like, on my own and, like, in the dark. And, like, you know what I mean? I was uh, trying to make it on my own. And, like, the thing is you're willing Mm -hmm. to do just to be able to support your own dreams and projects like i felt that really strongly so i'm i'm like i'm literally just like getting goosebumps watching this and it's so silly because it's it's f and f right so you don't expect much from it and just the way that i related to it it it, it, like i could feel my own depression in there i could feel i could feel like the the anxieties you get from from wanting to just make your own living and also feel comfortable doing what you love to do and it's and just being on your own and it's it's all in this dark ass room and it's just and it like it really hit a chord with me just because so many people like you think f and f mods and you you think oh they use this opportunity to showcase their oc they use this opportunity to make their oc in the f and f world so now people are drawing like cervante or they're drawing fucking witty or whatever the other mods are all the mods start looking the fucking same but then you come across this one and you can feel like a part 
of just Rebecca's anxieties or depression. You can feel like you feel like like you might actually be that person too. If you've ever been through like some deep depression, it starts getting relatable to the fact you're like, what the fuck is this? And of course, if I were to play the game myself, I wouldn't be able to beat the song. So it wouldn't have had like the emotional impact on me, I think. Or maybe it would have. And I'd be like trying to struggle to beat a fucking song because mm-hmm. I want to see what happens to Rebecca. Does she live in the end? You know what I mean? And it, it, it doesn't have an ending. She just falls over. Right? Yeah. And you're left, you're left in like silence. You're left in like, okay, well, we just went through all this for what? You know what I mean? All you, everything you're fucking working on, you're doing this for that. And then in the end, you just weren't strong enough or you struggled too hard or you stopped sleeping. And that's, mm-hmm. and that's really what it was. And it, I, I loved it. I thought it was cool. I thought the message is way more important than the gameplay, but that's just me when it comes to like, like storytelling. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, there's actually a kind of darker story behind it, and every time I tell the story, the voice chat I'm in gets like really like, oh my god, I didn't know that. Um, so I guess I should tell it now. Uh, why this mod exists and why it is the way it is because some people who can't relate yet because they're too young. Which I feel like this is a mod that isn't for young children. Definitely not. They shouldn't play it. Um, because the mod exists um, due to um, basically, first of all, COVID hitting. And, you know, that all was, everyone was struggling, right? Uh, then the before, uh, y- you know... You know, the, the riots in America that I heard all about and everything. And then it slowly came together. And we, we me and my family sort of went through that first year kind of like, oh, we're kind of still doing fine, right? It didn't, didn't hurt us too much. But like, my parents are a bit struggling with like, oh, it could be that layoffs are happening in their company. And, you know, soonish I should have some money put to the side just in case right right and i thought man this is this is getting serious now right like it's it's, if you worked on the thing for many years and you sort of had like a comfy living situation you didn't quite think about stuff getting real at some point um yeah and then you know uh, this year this relatively at the start I think it was like two months in um basically I had an appointment to get my wisdom teeth removed right yeah and in the same week because my father was suddenly struggling with health and it turns out that he had a hernia and he had to get operated and the exact same week funny enough I had it like already planned like oh I'm getting the wisdom teeth removed at this and this point I already planned that out everything um, he then, because it was supposed to be quick, getting stitched up and everything, the hernia, it was the same week. And the same week as well, my mom went to the hospital and there, she had something weird going on. So she was going to get looked into what was going on. Um, so in that one week, a lot of things happened and, uh, basically my parents couldn't do their normal things like buy water for example you know and the normal Jesus. things you need so i was helping them out quite a bit even though i wasn't supposed to with like a fucking like still open flesh wound in my face because of the um teeth removal yeah um and then my uh my teeth person later gave me a uh, medication that Landed me in the ER because I didn't react well to it. Jesus Christ. Uh, and then the doctor was angry at me because I I called the ambulance. like, And he was like, you know how much an ambulance costs to call? And like, we have free healthcare. I don't understand what you mean. I'm having a like shock from bad medication. <laughs> what the fuck? Right. And being then guilt tripped by the yeah, doctor. Yeah, I was getting guilt tripped by the doctor. Um, <laughs> and then I basically 
didn't take any medication anymore, even though I still had the open wound. Um, as a sort of powered through it. And then the week that happened, after that, uh, my mom got diagnosed with cancer because of the operation. They diagnosed Holy it. Holy like, yeah, shit. She had cancer. Um, and I was, even though I still had the pain in my cheek, I still had to, you know, do the things around the home. Um, because my brother was busy with other stuff. I don't, I don't remember quite what he was, but he didn't do as much. Um, so I had to be the big person of the house, basically, and do a lot of things. And then at one point, uh, so I also got to drive a car, finally, you know, I, I kind of was afraid to drive for a while, and then I had to do it because no one else would. Um, and then I drove a lot, and because I did, didn't drive a lot the past years, suddenly my arms started failing me, because I would also still try to animate and draw and, you know, follow my dream, do university also, and then, I, you know, help out my parents. Um, at some point, they gave up so much they couldn't use them for like two, three days. And I would just lie in bed and was like, I couldn't do anything, right? Because I just overworked myself to that degree. Um, yeah. And due to, to, uh, to complications with my mouth, I was also spitting up blood. Um, funny enough. What the fuck? Um, so after that, uh, I was still in contact with, you know, all my online friends. And one of them was doing uh, Friday Night Funkin' Mod, and they're still working on that. Um, and I was like, you know what? If a lot of my friends are into that Friday Night Funky stuff, why not? Why not me, you know? And then I, I it, within one week, I did the mod after I could, you know, do stuff with my arms again because I needed to vent. So it's basically me venting out all of those frustrations from that that time before. Um, and then it suddenly blew up and I, I actually didn't quite expect it to blow up because I never blew up before. Um, yeah. So yeah, so... A lot of these things that are in the mod are directly mirrored from my life at the time. Like actually sp spitting up blood. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Not being able to use your arms. Like use like the, the moral that the mod is like, yeah, as an artist you push yourself so far and it's like you become sleep deprived. And like all, and all I can feel now is like, Everything you were going through, you had to push yourself into, like, the unknown. Oh, shit, this happened to you. Now this, your dad has a hernia. Now your mom went to the hospital. Now she has cancer. Now you're trying to drive. Now your fucking arms are failing you. And it's like you're caught in the crossroad of trying to support your family at the same time support your dreams. And and it's, and yeah. somehow you also got to, got the mod out there just to express yourself. Yeah, so a lot of things that came with it that are good... Um, sort of were accidental to some degree because it was not what I was thinking about at the time. I was really thinking about just getting this out there as like, you know, something to express myself and then, you know, going back to what I was doing before with Stella Pie and everything. That's why also there's no Stella Pie mod and I'm not going to make a Stella Pie mod because it feels not like the media it's supposed to be in because that's the actual like big project and not i like i'm already known as rebecca from uh from friday night funkin right, <laughs> right. Tags. i don't want stella pie to be stella pie or Stella or pie from friday night funkin right i want it to be its own thing and i i feel like you there's no way you could I don't know. You you made something so personal when it comes to the cyber artist mod. How do you even match that? Like you, you do Stella Pie mod, but it wouldn't feel the same. It wouldn't be the same venting that you feel or the same frustrations you felt at the time. I, I can't imagine the emotions you were going through when it comes yeah. to something like that. That's that's wild because um, we were hanging out the fucking Pico Day cookout. Like you, you even sent me a picture of your fucking wisdom teeth in a bag <laughs> was, yeah and it, I, didn't, I had no idea that literally that week you were gonna go through some of the most 
the biggest trials you've probably ever had and and oh, I don't I don't know you it's just it's like you've been through so much I'm I, just I'm surprised you handled it like, I usually well also don't did. talk about it too much because I feel like it's a private matter really but sometimes it just boils over and this was the case with the starving artist mode right yeah yeah damn that I thank you Rebecca for sharing that I I would, I would like, like you, everyone else said when you told them, I would, I would not have known in the least bit. It means a lot to me. Yeah. I appreciate. I hope you, I hope your mom is doing better. I hope your dad's doing better. I hope everything like is doing better for you. If well, I, if I, if I were you, like, dude, we got like, we got to raise money like somehow, right? Like, how are you doing? Like, how is everything now? Like, what is, what's going on over there? Well, currently, the thing is, the big problem was never really the money, I would say. The money was more for the projects, right? This was for my passion. Um, So I was never purposefully or like... I never was missing money because my parents still support me. I mean, they can't physically, right? But with stuff like that, right? They're always behind me and I'm grateful for that. And that's why I'm so like worried about them just in general. But um, when it comes to like the whole starving part, a lot of people think I was actually starving, but I was going more for them you know metaphorical thing of right. a starving artist right like a because, struggling artist you yeah. could call it uh fucking working hard artist uh, sleep deprived artist it's just exactly. starving artist is like it's relatable because it's it's catchy or whatever mm. and i don't know so I mean, what do you what do you what else are you supposed to put fucking i'm going through some shit artists like <laughs> <laughs> yeah Fuck. exactly but yeah. Currently, I have to say, the money YouTube brought me in through ads and stuff helped me a tiny bit because I could actually get some stuff like furniture. Um, I could, you know, order food online so I didn't have to cook here. And, you know, it was easier for me to work and do different things without me having to put time aside to cook, basically, right? Right, right. So it was... It was really helping that. And <clears throat> I could also pay some people that I sort of promised to pay or I would feel bad if I didn't pay them sort of thing. Like they always are, everyone who like works with me is like, oh, if you don't have enough money, we can work something out or they um, they don't want any money, but it always feels really bad. So I could give back to the community a bit by paying people to work with me or like help me out with Stella Pie, for example, right? Yeah. Um yeah. We we need to do something. Um I know I know you said it's it's like not about the money, but I like you said you have been trying to, like I I I think you said earlier you were trying to get in contact with like Shock Robot or whatever and like mm -hmm. like if you need anything and like this is not facetious, this is and I'm not trying to pity you. I don't I don't feel that way, but I appreciate what you've done for bringing to light at least some mental health problems. Because before fucking Starving Artist, there was that stupid ass FNF Week Zero dementia bullshit. And like, that's. It's entertaining in its own fault, but it was. That's all it was, was entertaining. Whereas like, Starving Artist feels like you're actually trying to say something. And I didn't know it was that kind of message. Like, even just mm -hmm. the base level of not knowing you and, and watching it, like, I was, I was still like get, relating to it and like getting goosebumps and like just knowing this is like yeah. well, if you need anything like any help merchandising whatever like we can get into contact with tom or like we can get into contact with shark robot and we can do like a limited run like let's support artists and like we can get other people in on it too like it'll probably take a while and it's probably a lot more ambitious than i'm making it sound but if you ever mm -hmm. like want to help host a little community event and you can use our platform I, and like i don't mind like it doesn't bother me um i would have to think about stuff like that because currently i feel like in some parts i still need a bit of guidance but i don't know who to really turn to because i'm at a point where i could do probably something big with it because everything money-wise currently 
is really going towards all of the projects because I'm doing a Starving Artist 2 mod, basically. It's called Retaking Sanity. And right. I really want to, you know, get this going and stuff like that. But it's supposed to represent again what's going on, right? But after that, I'm a bit on the dry land, I guess, when it comes to my projects, because I know where I'm going, but I don't know, like, the structure of it all, right? You know how Visipop has, like, a uh, lion artist uh, storyboard, yeah. you know, there's like, there's, like, a pipeline going on. I don't have that yet. I'm still very much flicking back and forth and seeing who has time, who wants to do something, who wants to pitch in, you know, I'm still sort of flip-flopping. And I right. I don't know how to fix that yet. If I if I could uh, uh reach out to someone that could help you out, that would be Meat Canyon. He's uh he's very nice. He's personable. Um, he runs his own thing like that. He has fans to show Sierra Sora or Pop Taffy, who's actually a mod for the server. Um, he's got all these artists that work for him, and he's used mm -hmm. to working on like that pipeline because they push out new videos every week. So if you need help figuring out how to structure your company, I'm almost one billion percent positive I could help, help um at least reach out to Meat Canyon or Hunter Hunter Hancock I could reach out mm -hmm. to him and and see if there's not anything he can like do as well as like there's always two left thumbs who's helping um market or at least uh I don't know what a developer does for a game but he two left thumbs knows enough about the industry and he's working with Jack on Dead Estate so if you ever like need industry professionals or like people who have been through the game because you feel like a little bit lost there's do not like hesitate to reach out mm -hmm. to at least the podcast group because like like Josh Josh Cycle Goldfish he he programs for Newgrounds he he knows enough people like if if you need help and I'm again I'm not trying to like pity you I just I like the message that you bring with the starving artist you need a little bit of help everyone's trying to help everyone it's not nothing out of the norm like if you need you need help with stickers and prints i asked Saptastic like the best way to get stickers and prints and that might just be in the u.s right now but like i can i can help you figure out how to merchandise you know what i mean that way you're not you're, you're at least figuring everything out how to be self-sustainable because like you yeah. said you you didn't want to be a burden on your parents now they might need you a little bit more but if you could just like help yourself in a way that helps your parents in a way that also helps your community then it's just all around good for everyone and like i'm here for that is what i'm trying to say definitely thank you no pro <laughs> no problem dude fuck i wasn't expecting to cry today fuck damn it mm -hmm. Get some hankies, okay? Yeah, I don't know. I got a granola bar wrapper. I don't know what to fucking, <laughs> fucking do. Oh. Jesus Christ. Let's Whew, let's all uh it's uh a publisher, that's what it is. Yeah, two left thumbs is a really is a publisher that Tom got Jack in to contact with for Data State. And so if you need help with anything, um Fuck. Uh mm, okay. We're gonna um uh, just gonna are you okay to like to keep going? We're good. I sure, I'm. I'm Hell perfectly yeah. fine. Hell yeah! Just tell me if you yeah. need a minute. I. <laughs> Woo! Ah, okay. I'm just gonna suck boogers up back in my nose. So retaking sanity. What do you think is the future for that? For starving artists, basically too. Retaking sanity. What do you? What are your plans for that? Cause okay. and. Uh, and maybe if you want to elaborate on the music choice, because now you're familiar with like the music you wanted for the first one, and I've seen you cut, say so, that there's okay, two, two there's, songs already. There's okay. The songs are basically done by um, my good friend. A moment. Uh, one second. Uh, Seb Barrister. I always call him Seb <laughs> because I I don't know how to say it, but like. Uh, he he has made the music tracks for Starving Artists as well. And the thing is, there's this whole story where I was in the modding community in the in the server in the VC, hanging out every day and just sort of working on my mod, right? Just sort of listening in and sort of asking because I wanted to do it all on my own. That was like my mindset because it was a personal thing, right? Right. Um, so I was sort of sitting there doing my own thing, learning programming on the side. 
I learned like programming like two days basically, three days, uh, just for this mod. And then um, I had help a bit later on. But basically, uh, I was almost done. I was working on the music at that point. And then Seb comes into the voice chat, listens to my music, is like, I want to do you that music. That that sounds terrible what you got going there. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So he basically did all the tracks in like a day, right? Not even a day, like an evening, basically. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was great. I was like, I, I don't know shit about music, really. So I was like, perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> he really he hit the undertones too, like the the way that Rebecca sounds and the way that F, uh, boyfriend has to talk back to it. It's like it's it is kind of got like that dark feeling to it, you know, mm -hmm. like that yeah. like little sad feeling to it. And yeah. like when Rebecca's hunched over, like grabbing her stomach, and like the beats like going slower, and like it's kind of mm -hmm. it all meshes really well. So a uh, shout out to Seb, shout yeah. out to whatever whatever his full name is. Shout out to <laughs> shout out. So to him. I asked him if I should say anything about it. Uh, like anything else and he said tell them that I literally fucking begged you to do the music for that <laughs> why well, he just liked I don't know he probably just heard your stuff and like it just sounds like you hang out with these people a lot so he yeah. he must have felt he owed it to you so you could get out your your message a lot better you know? oh no I think we met the same day I think we met the same day just no way met. really I'm, I'm pretty sure we met the same day yeah what a pimp. Um, yeah, oh yeah. He's cool. <laughs> I like yeah, that. He, he also did uh, the music for the um, uh, Happy Tree Friends mod. With Whoa. The, the, with the hunting knife. The, 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 it's, I don't know I, what I, his name is. I think he's like, it's a beaver or whatever. I don't know what his yeah, name no, is. No, it's either. a bear. It's a bear with oh. post-traumatic stress disorder or some shit. Oh, okay, okay. Uh... But yeah, he did the music for that. Flippy. Yeah, the Flippy mod. It's it's really good. Um, Flippy. So yeah. And he did the music for the new mod. You know, a retaking sanity. But it's way different. It's a complete diversion, I would say, from the original mod. Because it's about healing, basically, the mod. So it's more uplifting, this one is. Yeah. Because my Bro. character didn't die in the first mod. She just collapsed, basically, you know? Yeah. But that that's what the cliffhanger ending is all about. That way, in the second version, you can, you know, kind of do what you wanted with it. And yeah. Um, I, I also... Hmm? Were you expecting to make a sequel? By the way, just quick question. So, the sequel was only made while uh so i have a charter called sand planet and he charted the first mod and while he was charting i was in vc with him sort of almost holding his hand because he was he was really sad and crying all the way through charting the song so oh my like, god yeah he was almost like torturing himself and i was like there being like she's not dead she's not dead actually she was supposed to die in the start because you know i was doing it on my own i was like my one mod done and I'm heading out basically. That yeah, was yeah. So I was like, nah, she's not that almost lying through my teeth. Um, and then in the end, I was like, what if, what if, since I have this team, this amazing team on the, my wings, what if she was actually not dead? What if there's more, right? And then yeah. it, it just developed from there. And then people are doing like fan comics. I'm like, okay, I, this is happening now. <laughs> this is happening. The, the lore has expanded so far. It's like it's just, it's its own little like universe or whatever. So yeah, basically. Um, what? I also had a little poll because I was like, "What if I had a secret song?" <laughs> because <laughs> um, originally the new mod was just gonna be three songs. You know, something uplifting, chilly, right? Chilly, cool. Yeah. Um. Uh, but then I was like, "What if it had like an extra song?" Right? And then I made up these concepts of one being Ben, right? The the killer, serial killer Ben. Right. And then like a full demon, you know, hot demon version of Rebecca. Um, <laughs> and then uh, one was possession Rebecca. So she's like possessed by like a gremlin that's coming out of her back. Like it okay. looks really cool. 
And then I had one called Gamma, which is a character from an older comic uh, with the flags, the one, you know, that, that time around. I had Gamma as, like, the evil one, I would say, to some degree, or, like, evil realistic, where it's like, oh, there's a lot of bad shit in the world and we can't do anything about it sort of character, and they know and they always tell you about it. Yeah. It's like you were having a good meal finally after like, I don't know, a week and then suddenly Gamma is on the side being like, you know, someone in Africa is starving. Oh, okay. So he's kind of a dick. He's yeah. Kind of, I see. I see. I see. That, that's basically Gamma. So and who won? Who won the poll? Or is Ga- it? Gamma won. Gamma won out of everything else. Like they, yeah. they skipped over Hot Demon version Rebecca. They skipped over Ben. They skipped over uh, Possessed Rebecca. They're like Gamma. That's the one. Yeah, I feel like because I gave a little description like what they do. One is like Ben is like this cannibal killer. Then there's Gamma who's just this glitchy black mass. So it's like just the silhouette, like a shadow with red eyes basically. There's no defining features really. I see, I see, I see. And they liked it, they liked it. Yeah, and that's from what? How how obscure is that character? Uh, It's from the comics with the flags and stuff okay and like the with so there's alpha beta and gamma alpha is just my normal character you know my sona beta is uh like a cutesy childish sort of version that means good but does the complete opposite of good right okay it's very naive very trusting very stupid like gamma would be the character that gets uh Gets abducted by a white van, really. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then. Um, G- and Gamma is like the complete opposite, right? I see. So Gamma is like a, a troublemaker, but so it's but it's a Rebecca. It's a Rebecca Doodles like persona, basically. So. Yeah, basically. I see. I see. She's ha- she has all these different versions, all these different emotions, all these different ways to play the character. Mm-hmm. So. So it's your Sona, but in a different mind state. Now they don't exist. Like they're not not like a doppelganger, are they? Are they the same person? Or uh, I would say in some cases it's like a different character, but in other cases it's the same. Uh, I like to think it's the if Gamma wasn't part of my Sona Rebecca, I think Rebecca wouldn't have the demonic features I had sometimes, right? Right, I see. So, so there you go. Like these two sides. The multiple facets of Rebecca Doodles, everyone. Yeah. All right. That was a F- that was the Starvey Artist mod number one and number two, and mm-hmm. I'm glad uh, we got to like touch base. And I'm I'm really happy you opened up to us. My head still hurts from crying. Let's move uh-huh. on to something that everyone really is really interested in, uh, that we. That we should probably go over a little bit, which be mm-hmm. which would be the re- the credit you get for reviving Pecan Joe. I, I wouldn't that. say it's all of the credit. It's I feel like the Friday and Funkin stuff sort of sparked interest in old Newgrounds characters overall. So I saw some other people drawing Pecan Joe as well, and so I just sort of went out and just spammed invites to this one Discord server to all of the people that have drawn Picanjo ones before. Nice. So I like where this is going. I was so just... They all, yeah. They all showed up, but why, I thought you owned the server. Someone told me that oh, you yeah. owned... Yeah, yeah, I owned that server, that first server. Um, But then later on, they just... Since I was trying to keep the server sort of orderly... Not a lot of people like that. And then later on, I tried to make it more mature, as in like uh, 17 or 16 plus only allowed in the server, right? Right. So I slowly started to, um, you like know, moderate. Throw, yeah, moderate and throw some people out. Like some people were good artists and everything, but I had to clean the server up a bit, right? Oh my. Because I first had sort of a shock tactic showing some older Piconjo media being I like see. so so this is what we are looking at this is what pikanjo is are you willing to stay right sort of <laughs> deal. are you willing to stay? you showed people what it was that's 
Ja- all right, Psycho Goldfish, Josh, he brought up a good point. He's like, people remember Pikanjo with, like, rose-colored glasses, right? Like, not... People like the character design, but they don't know too much about, like, uh, everything they used to do back in the day because a lot of the younger crowd obviously wouldn't be on Newgrounds at the time. So, I mean, if yeah. that turns anyone away from, like, you showing them, like, hey, look, this is how edgy he is, et cetera, mm. et cetera, you know what I mean? Then I get it, you know what I mean? They'd be like, yeah, okay. I'm not into this. I also had this idea, which is, I called it the gauntlet. It's basically one evening, we all sat together in a voice chat, everyone was muted, and we watched together all of the old, you know, Picanjo, or some some Picanjo cartoons that were given to me by the people behind Picanjo, basically. Um, And I sort of showed them to the people, right? And everyone who stayed got this gauntlet role, right? And they thought about <laughs> doing it again. But then, like, I realized that no matter what I did, the people are so hyped. I don't think anyone left. I don't think anyone left. Either. I think you made it more fun. You get the gauntlet if you stick through it. So, like, you kind of brought the community yeah. close together for him. And I, I know, I know, Picanjo spoke during the Newground Summer Festival, but I didn't get to hear him speak, so I don't even know like what he sounds like, or mm. I know how he, I know how he acts. Like I get it, the whole like Picanjo loves you. I think it's, I think it's fun, mm. you know. I think it's really fun. Oh, but, it is fun, yeah. You know, uh, but I think it's more fun if you don't know too much, right? It's <laughs> more if you're an outside fan, you're like, yeah. I, I can get that. I but see, I see. The moment you know too much, it's like, oh, that's actually Picanjo? Because there's this mindset of this, uh, the other version of Picanjo, which was very much fictionalized. What was it? The the, the New Grounds Rumble version? Yeah, right? the Mind Chamber version, which he calls the, which Picanjo calls the Butt Chamber version. Exactly. Which we have to... that, we have that, uh, we have mm-hmm. that emoji in here. Uh, it's the butt chamber emoji that Picanjo came up with. There you go. That's <laughs> he, <laughs> that's how much he appreciated it. <laughs> yeah. So there's this whole thing, and I feel like there's a right for both versions to exist in a way, because I I've gotten so many versions now of my Sona that other people made and use and role play as and whatever. I feel like it'd be silly to just be like, oh, this one version is less superior because I I say so, basically. Right, they all represent different things, basically. Yeah. And I, I get I get knowing too much. Like, edgy culture, it, it, there, there's places for it. Like, there's, there's even edgy servers that I know that are... I'm just gonna come out and say, it. like, uh, if you're an art know, server, it's really, it's really edgy. Board. It's not a place for me, but I still love Aether. You know what I mean? Just interacting with these communities a little bit difficult yeah. because I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't solicit in those kind of crowds, and I don't blame anyone who likes edgy culture. I don't, I don't care. Like, let you be yourself. Just if you're targeting people and soliciting actual hate, that's when it mm. becomes a problem to me. If you're actually being freaking racist, you're not just trying to be some like edgy dude on the internet. And you're not just like you're having fun, you know. What I mean, sometimes it's it is at the at the expense of other people. But if you're being like actual hate, hateful and like bullying, and then that's when it becomes a problem, you know. So yeah, though yeah. I, I have to say the Picanjo Day stuff Your was Lord really fun. And savior, people were like Picanjo. just doing the randomest shit. Hell yeah! No, yeah. all the art that came out, my god, I love. Yeah. People just having fun shit posting again because he 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 does represent a lot of shit posts like mm-hmm. quality like you just make something make your persona and then next you know he becomes a Newgrounds character because he's oh. in uh, he's in Newgrounds Rumble. <laughs> that reminds me, there was there was a Twitter account saying like oh P- uh, uh, not because um it's just posting Newgrounds characters right yeah and they were like oh so today's Newgrounds character is Rebecca I'm like what. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. When did you become a new grounds character? That, that's a, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> You're like, whoa, there. Same thing that happened with the uh, cassette girl. She but grew up to you be specifically new, new grounds, new grounds, new grounds. I think it's just because, I mean, do people know you for like liking new grounds culture or something? Is that like I attached to your so. persona? I guess so because new grounds is, I don't know, like 
I think about three years ago, I really started going back to Newgrounds because I was really annoyed with the landscape of a lot of other social media at the time. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So I went there a lot and then I did, you know, the Tank Deck remake and everything. So I feel like some parts I'm now connected to Newgrounds more so. You did reanimate Tank Deck at, at the response of Tom Falp saying, yeah, dude, go ahead. Like, that does mean a lot. Because I, I would not consider Cervante or... or mm, I wouldn't consider Witty part of Newgrounds either. But at the same time, it's like FNF is Newgrounds. So if you mod it... Mm. But if you don't give that to the community or you're not a part of it, then I, I have trouble saying like, oh, yeah, this is a Newgrounds character because mm -hmm. I could care less if you don't give back to it. I, I like that people boost up FNF by doing the mods and that that culture brings more attention mm -hmm. to it, which in turn comes back to Newgrounds because of the way that Cam set the game up with all the references. Yeah. But if you're if you're doing it for your own platform and you're not part of the community, you haven't even tried to be a part of the community, then I really could give like two fucks. Like I'm going to say it bluntly. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you're on this podcast because I believe you're a part of Newgrounds in a, in a big facet. I don't want to say like a, the biggest facet of the community, but you've, you've done reanimated. Can't, Ninja Muffin 99 is the one that scouted you. Like that that says a lot to me. And you were there at the Pico Day cookout. You know, it's mm. that that's what matters to me. And I think you are a, a positive like influence on the community to say yeah. to at least say the least, you know. I just wish I had more time again to do like these collabs because they were really fucking fun. Just shit, you're busy. Shit, you know? You're yeah. so busy now. You're so like, busy now. Like even Pikanjo was like, "Hey, uh, there's gonna be like a European Pikanjo Day thing we're doing." And I'm like, "Yeah, I, I can't, I can't be part of it. I'm sorry." Too much it's, going on. Yeah. Well, that's what and, it's like. The life of an artist, and what? Yeah. And. I'm kind of still sad because I wanted to do something bigger for Clock Day and I just this little doodle and that's it. <laughs> I Even was wondering that. I saw you do something for Clock Day. I'm like, never again. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, she never did anything else for Clock Day. I'm like, well, Ugh. I did something this year, a little drawing, but before I did like full on like flash animations and shit. Yeah, for uh, Snail Clock, I think, or something yeah, like snail, that. Yeah, Snail Brain Clock. That was actually funny because in the Clock community it was like more of a joke oh you want to be snail brain clock as like your sona like your clock sona in a way. <laughs> and i didn't know at the time but seemingly someone already owned that moniker right oh. um so i just took it but like the person was like not online or we didn't see each other at all like for like half a year and suddenly someone is like yo uh i'm actually spicy clock what is what is this about and i'm like uh, <laughs> I've been using it for like half a year now. I don't know. <laughs> That's hilarious. We need a list of all the clock IPs that are taken up. Oh, I think there is a list. Um, if you they they have a forum. They have a forum. Uh, oh my god, it's beautiful. Forums still live on. It's yeah. twenty twenty one. We're still using forums, baby. All right. Uh, I think we covered everything that I got in my notes. I just got Patreon questions left. We've been through a lot today. Mm -hmm. We learned a lot about Rebecca Doodles, the reason why her persona is the way it is, what it was like uh, going to school in Germany for her because she's four foot eight. She became an easy target, but she had a support system through her parents. And she's always wanted to animate since like age five, like the gall of this girl. She's she's walked into crowdfunding. She's pitched a show on Adult Swim. She was given 50 bucks. She's she's considered a Newgrounds character. Apparently, she's been part of the furry community. Like we're talking like deep roots that we covered today. And I thank everyone who has stuck around to even even if it was only for like 15 minutes. You know, what I mean, if you're listening to it on the bus from the way home from school, if you listen to it a little bit at work, I appreciate you guys because, you know, it's it's getting to know these people in the community that kind of inspires us. I hope to to just love being a part of Newgrounds and, and what it does for us. And I'm glad we all shared this moment today <laughs> together today. <laughs> all right, I'm getting sappy. All right. Patreon questions. You ready? Yeah. Pew pew. All right. Ravi asks, cake or pie? Mm, cake. Cake. Oh, no Stella pie in the household. Danny Rats asks, if you could pursue another creative endeavor, what would it be? Mm, uh, director for horror short films like uh, 
like the ones uh, Dead Meat usually reviews and was part of. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Uh, uh, um, there's like this creature, no, Luxy or something. And there's like a like a, a YouTube channel that makes a lot of horror shorts, and I would love to be like a director for that shit. There you go, hell yeah. Uh, that's something you share in common with me, Canyon. He was supposed to be working on his uh like a short horror film. I don't know if he ever finished it. He says it's a lot of freaking work, but he loves that shit. Um, mm-hmm. Pixel Pixel Turkey as take over the f- if you could take over the front page no like if you were for okay hold on huh, take a breath um if you could take over the front page of new grounds what would you do with it and why like, like the like, background no the- no 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 like take it over like if you could post art and animations like what would you put up there from from other people what would you like to see up there it could be nsfw it's your front page oh what i would like to see yeah oh what? god <laughs> Uh, let me think. Uh, what do you like to see in art and animation and music? Oh, just games? generally. Okay, okay. Generally, well, well, somewhat. It, was... it kind of answers the question itself because this is the type of stuff you would put on the front page. I would probably have like very artistic, like depictions of gore drawings. Yeah. <laughs> like but... my god, it'd be so cool to have like. I don't know, just skulls, bones. Has, has anyone ever looked at the bones of a foot? Those are like very like detailed and stuff. If someone does like a really detailed skeleton, it always looks really cool. But oh hell yeah! You know, maybe some uh, candy gore. If anyone knows what that is, you know, uh, you know stuff like that, like. Spooky, basically. Spooky stuff. <laughs> Spooky stuff. Rebecca Doodles takes over the Newgrounds front page for Halloween every year. <laughs> That'd be cool. That'd be cool. That'd be funny. Hell yeah. Um, Stepford. Stepford asks, what are some of your favorite connections that you've made um, over the past few years? Favorite connections? Like with people or like other groups, you know? Oh god, I've connected with so many groups. So many groups. Uh I would say thank a lot uh the people from the anime campaign uh Fight Club. Now no one knows what that is, but it's like basically a tabletop, but it's like a game you play and anyone can jump in, right? Yeah. And it's usually two characters fight each other, and then you roll the D twenty and then you see uh, who wins or like who who loses you know it, it's like Wait. a whole fun thing hold on do you start off like hp and if you roll yeah. whatever you roll takes it okay chutney glaze has been doing that on his own server like he hosts like these big anime fights and he'd be like this guy versus this guy and they each have 100 health and then they'll they'll come up with an attack or whatever and depending on what they what they roll it either lands or you know what i mean like oh you took yeah. six hp in, in Chutney, he, he it's fun it's fun i like that too that is actually pretty fun it was fun yeah. to watch so yeah. that fight club i think a lot just because it was fun to be part of and i wish i could you know do it again but again it's like it's the time and the effort and it takes like three hours sometimes to get through yeah the <laughs> so so there you have it the things you wish you could do with your time. So that's that's yeah. just something you stare out your window and you think about and you're like, man, I wish I had the time exactly. for that. <laughs> um, um, then, of course, of course, anyone that's connected to Picanjum are really cool. There you and, go. Well, not all, but most people. <laughs> well, yeah, um, any any community, community um, has people, you know, like that. Um... Uh, Otherwise, you know, the Friday Night Funkin' people, the, the modding people. Uh, big shout out to Ash, who's a coder. I really, really enjoy him as a friend. Uh, you know, Seb and everything, everyone. God, there's so many people. Then also shout out to the Danger Dawn people, mostly Hellbent. His group is amazing. Um, then, you know... Uh, God, uh, the the council of YouTube people also shout out. You guys are also pretty fog. Uh, Who the hell is the council of YouTube? Uh, it's a it's a place for like big YouTubers to just sit around, really, and do their thing. There you go. 
Thank you, girl. I said your favorites, Rebecca. <laughs> oh, no, I love them all, okay? <laughs> she can't I, pick one over the other. <laughs> I can't, okay? I can't. <laughs> all right, here's, uh, here's another one from Stepford that I like. He says, uh, what project would you like to work on even though even though you would know that you're not equipped properly or like you don't have the skills enough to work on it so like it could be like a cartoon like professional cartoon that you like or like something you would work on like even if it was like game development you know you're not properly equipped for it but you would love to work on something Anything. oh god uh, the the guy that uh made summer jack get summer jack gandy gandy something something uh, gandy I, Gandhi. Gandhi? Gandhi? No, Gandhi <laughs> something. To, oh, I can't remember. But he makes a lot of good shows, and I would have loved to, you know, just work on one of his. It would have been cool. Are they animations? Or are they like. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, they're, okay, they're, okay. Samurai Jack. Samurai Jack. There you go. Oh, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah that guy. I would love yeah. to just work on one of his projects. Or. That'd be sweet. Just. Uh, um. A music video for Gorillaz. I I think I would love to work on that. Oh my god, those are both really good uh, answers. Yeah. Jesus. Well done, well done. Um, I did notice at one point. Um, it was during one of your story time animations. You took like all the line art off of your animation, and like it was just you, like borderless, which reminds me reminded me of like Samurai Jack type style. Yeah. You know? Like, like something like Kid Cosmic, you know, the guy who made Also Yvonne Over Yonder. There you go. There you go. I like that. All right, Kevin. Kevin asks, oh, he said, uh, how did you revive Pikanjo? We went over that. But he also said, where did that spark come from? And the, which I think is still a good question. Like, where did that come from that you wanted to? I would say the Pikanjo thing happened because I was looking, what was it? I was looking for underground Newgrounds characters, I'm pretty sure. And I think I saw Picanjo at some point before, while well, just normally using Newgrounds back in the day. But I think I just saw this character and I was like, there's there's some serious potential there because, you know, I saw the Mind Chamber one, right? The, the quote-unquote Butt Chamber one. And yeah. I was like, you know... He has a big sword, and I like to animate some fight scenes. Oh yeah, I saw this unfinished fight scene someone animated. I think it was for uh, P uh, Pico Day at one point, where Pico and Picantro fight, but it's like line art. It's like breaking apart piece by piece, sadly, because that person never finished it, right? Yeah. And I was like, what if I actually finish it until Pico Day and actually, like, sort of carry the legacy for that, right? Yeah. But I also didn't finish it. <laughs> <laughs> Turns so out it's made... really hard to animate that. No, no shit. <laughs> um, so I did a drawing. I did a really well done drawing. And then I was like, hey, you know, this, I like this, you know? This is a, this is sort of up my alley. You know, chaos and, you know, bit of gore and blood, you know? So yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, this little edgy little shit that I saw, let me, let me, let me do something with it. And then I, of course, I didn't know that the person actually still was around or existed. You yeah, know? two, two left thumbs said he died from a double kidney transplant, so I don't blame you. Yeah, so of course I was only going off, first of all, the wiki, and then second of all, the, you know, you know Piconjo flash animations. So I was, I was still researching in the back, and then... Other people were like having rumors who could be who, right? Yeah. So, which was completely wrong lead. It, it was complete trash. <laughs> it was funny <laughs> as fuck. But you're, you're like asking yeah. people like if they're Picanjo. Sort of, yeah. I wasn't that direct. I was more like doing in the background. I wouldn't straight up just ask, hey, are you Picanjo? No, I would just sort of look around. And there one day, go. the guy actually joins the Discord, Hello, everyone. and then, it you know, I. it went from there. That's so crazy. So you just had fun with the character, and you thought it was a cool, like, design just because of the sword. So yeah. 
Yeah, that's cool. The little butt chamber one. There you go, Picanjo. You old butt chamber. Your your own revival. That has to feel bad in some aspect. I don't think they actually beef though. I don't think they actually beef. Pluffmot asks, um, you go into fast food, uh, what's your order? I, I think he also asked, hold on. Oh, what Rebecca's go to fast food joint is and what's your go to order? Um, I have two. Uh one is one is easy, that is Domino's. I really like Domino's. Um, there you be- go. Because we have a we have a pizza place around the corner that's like a local one, which supposedly is supposed to be good. But every time I ate there, it's been like here over ten years, this pizza place, and it's it's garbage. Straight up garbage. <laughs> It's, it's awful. Like, so, so you have to go to Domino's to get good yeah, pizza. Yeah. That's awful. Well, I think Domino's is actually top tier when it comes to pizza. Everyone tries to tell me Little Caesars is good, and I, I hope you just don't have Little Caesars in we, Germany. We don't have that. No. Good. There's a reason for that. I'm, I'm looking at you, chat, for everyone who's a Little Caesars stand. Stand. Uh, we also have Pizza Hut, but Pizza Hut gives me stomach cramps. I don't know. That shit garbage. It's weird. Their sauce is like really sweet too. I think their their crust is different yeah. too. Yeah. Whatever. Um, but there's another thing, and that's tacos. Not Taco Bell tacos, but we have like a actually good. We have like good Mexican food over here. It, it's a fast food, or is it just uh just like? It looks like a fast food place, but the food is not like fast food. It's like. Germany has different standards in food generally, so if a fast food chain comes over here, they either have to be really fucking good or really fucking cheap, and no one can afford to have, like, a building rented if they're really cheap, so that's, like, a rarity, right? Oh, I see. So it has to be really fucking good food, or you're dead, basically, as a fast food chain. Wait, so what do you get from Domino's? Just a a regular pizza? Just a medium? Pepperoni? Um... I used to get, I think it's called Green Garden, which is a lot of vegetables because I like broccoli. There you go. Yeah. I don't even know if they have that over here. I've never, I've never ordered from Domino's. I was like, can I get a Green Garden? Sounds like something cool that you guys only have. We have a lot of specific stuff over here. Like McDonald's has actual like signature burgers, which are um, burgers that have like guacamole and stuff. And you can get cakes at a Mac Cafe, which is like a add on to. Uh, mcdonald's that is always next to it uh so you can, can get like an iced coffee and a piece of strawberry shortcake oh my god all right yeah. well i'm jealous thank you for uh flexing on me right there at the end i appreciate that <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> everybody it's been uh rebecca doodles actually i gotta shout out to the patrons i'm sorry i gotta force you to to listen to this real quick it's fine all right, uh, I'm just going to give a shout out to our patrons. Let's see if I can find them correctly. Dun, dun, dun. Relationship manager. Dun, dun, dun. All right, everybody. Current tier. Here we go. All right, thank you to Old School. Thank you to Daniel Sun. Thank you to Zachary Jones. Thank you to Steph. I'm supposed to get louder, but I, don't, I, I can't. I don't want to yell in my house. Thank you to Stepford. Thank you to Spectre Lee. Thank you to Ravioli Box. Thank you to Pixel Turkey. Thank you to George Karelic. Which oh wait, uh, this is the super patron tier. I'm screwing this up. Uh, thank you to Quartet G. Thank you to Carissa Inabet. And then uh, thank you to Boozel. Uh, wait, hold on. This yeah, patron, fix your. I can't even tell who's donating what. Patron, fix your format. Thank you to Boozel. And then Super Patron. Thank you to our Super Patron. Benny. Thank you to Bacon. Uh, thank you to our Grand Super Patrons. Tara Vex. Thank you to Kevin Polo. Thank you to Daniel McDonald. And also thank you to Tom Fulp. We finish every episode by saying that. That's the only reason that Tom's, uh, Tom's a patron. It's just so we have to say his name at the end. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone, everyone, this has been Rebecca Doodles. Um, again, we learned a lot. Can we, can we all just like, can we all thank her for being personable, for sharing her experiences with us? Uh, I'm, sh- I'm sure it doesn't matter what you guys did or what you guys do for creatively. It's something you picked up on here today, and we, we learned a lot. And I'm, I'm Rebecca. I'm serious. If you ever need like anything. When it comes to to marketing, to knowing what to do with your art, your product, and I can point you in the right direction of someone that someone that'll put you in good hands or at least give you advice. Oh, 
Oh, sure. I'll definitely stay in contact and, you know, DM you if anything comes up. Cool. Um, but Specifically, yeah. I think it, when Starving Artist 2 comes out, you should try to do uh, a good run of merch for that. I think it'll, I think it'll do really well. No, that's a really good idea. I might do that. Actually, that might be a good thing to be like the shark robot, right? Because Absolutely. Because red bubbles, like, percentage is not very good. I have uh I have the ways like um I had Tom send me over all the the ways to earn profit from t-shirts like the, the it's it depends on the amount of colors you choose and mm-hmm. then there's there's ways to get around it too I can send you all of that or at least walk you through it if you ever I, I you mean, know I, decide to go that yeah. route Yeah I, like I was in contact with them beforehand and that you know didn't work out because no one wanted a line out shirt basically that was a thing yeah that's that's trust me marketing is its own thing and i i like what you represent we can definitely figure something out to where it'll work out in everyone's favor it'll be fun and if i pair you with other people too that represent a good message as well and we make them limited run i have no doubt that people will want to buy them you Um, know for a good purpose yeah you know if they buy our stupid ass t-shirts for for just for raising money for new grounds because we host a little event they should be able to support mental health and and support you and your family going through shit it's just it's nice anyway anyway yeah. Woo, uh, this has been rebecca doodles thank you everyone saying thank you to rebecca this has been the new grounds podcast it is now almost three hours into it i did not expect it to last this long cool little intermission i'm glad we all had a little pee break together it's like it's like we're all like friends now, you know what I mean? We've all been through something. So any last thing you want to say, Rebecca, before we leave? Well, thank you for having me. It's been a really great time. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Aww. And there you have it. Follow her on Twitter. Follow her Newgrounds. Support her Patreon. Watch her YouTube. Yeah, everything oh. helps. Every little thing helps. And don't forget to drink water and have a few rests between working. <laughs> that stand up go for a walk stretch definitely <sighs> thank you everyone and that is the end thank you for listening to the new grounds podcast this show is recorded live on our discord server join us at bit.ly slash ngp discord for the latest news follow us on twitter at the ng podcast thank you to Waterflame for the use of his song Gabberfly. Goodbye. Woo! Normally we have a little after show, but holy fuck, today has been, yeah. <laughs> been a really long episode. I was not expecting that. Uh, if anyone wants to shoot questions to Rebecca Doodles, that's fine. Like, uh, mm-hmm. But she, she has her own life to live. You can stick around as long as you like, Rebecca. It's up to you. Um, if anybody wants to, if anyone wants to come on and like talk, you can just raise your hand in the crowd and we'll bring you on. Um, you know, anything you guys want to say, um, you can stop your recording and then I'll, I'll, I'll toss you a link to upload it. I'm going to stop mine.